Hello and welcome to Lake Geneva, everybody. We're here at the Gygax House in Lake Geneva, playing D&D for Extra Life for Kids. And I am joined by a fabulous group of people who are donating their time and beverages and maybe food, who knows, we'll, we'll share. It'll be a sharing community. Um, to play D&D and have a lot of fun and raise money. So with me, starting on this side, I have my friend Larry Hamilton. Larry, introduce yourself and tell us about what character you're gonna be playing in my game. My name's Larry Hamilton, and I'm playing Thazbold Torion, human fighter. Right over here. Right over there. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. My first experience of this. All right, and then Alex. Hi, I'm Alex Gygax, youngest of the Gygax children. I am playing a human barbarian today who has yet to have a name. Uh, donate, and we'll figure out what uh, my character's name is going to be. Right on. All right, Mark. Hi, I'm Mark, CMG Clover, owner of Creative Mountain Games, and I manage Lake Geneva Games right here in town. I'm playing a dwarven cleric, and uh, please donate and name this character for me. A lot of naming options there. That's awesome. And now on the other side of the table, we have my friend John, who is actually the, the founder of this crazy idea <laughs> to play in, in Gary's old house and uh, have some D&D fun and raise money. So, John, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, I'm John Gilbert. I am uh, on the board for the Extra Life Milwaukee Madison Guild. Uh, and I'm playing John Wolf, the human uh, rogue. And uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like a dream come true. It's been a lot of work getting this together, but right. we're, we're right going to have some fun and play some games. Right on. All right. And then we have Travis. Travis? Hi, uh, I'm Travis Tobe, uh, at GM underscore Travis underscore on Twitter. Um, I'm going to be playing uh, Gawain, which is a barbarian druid. He likes to go into bear form and rage. Nice, nice. And then Fenway. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Fenway Jones, also on Twitter as Fenway Jones, the teen DM. I am the founder of Jasper's Game Day, um, and I'm going to be playing a Dragonborn Sorcerer today. Uh, donate and name my character. Nice. A lot of, lot of naming options. So other than just naming characters, though, there are some cool ways that you guys can actually have an impact on our games all day today. So I'm going to throw it over to John, and he's going to kind of explain what some of those options are for the different donation levels. Go ahead, John. So we, we uh, starting at one dollar, you can give any one of the players or the DM at the table a reroll. That's With that. I just hold on. A reroll for a dollar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's a must, DM's nightmare, John. Yeah. This is a DM nightmare. All right, go ahead. Keep you, going. You you must take the result of the new roll. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so it could so, be so, worse. So. so so, okay, I'm, I'm down with that. That's five dollars, cool. and you can buy advantage or disadvantage for any player or the DM. Ooh, yes. Yeah, Do you guys smell that? It's a it's the smell of a TPK coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. If you donate ten dollars, you can buy somebody their next check, a natural twenty or a natural one. Ooh. All right. Wow. Yeah. Right on. Uh, for twenty five dollars, you can buy. A character, a standard health potion. They're getting a little weak. You want to pump them back up. You like that character? Travis, is that what we have down here? Do we have some health potions? Yeah. Show the people. Have, we have a couple health potions down here that, that I brought. They're just little jars with the D4s in them. So nice. 2D4 plus 2. Nice. Yeah. All right. So Sorry. people can get healed up. Just magic of the gods. Just a potion appears in your pouch. Nice. $25 will also give you the option of... Um, Naming one of our characters that needs a name. Nice, nice. Uh, $50, you can buy a character a greater health potion. Ooh. And give them that boost. Wow. All right. That's, those are some nice uh, interventions. We'll call them, you know, they, they allow uh, all you guys watching to, to be able to participate and have a, an active impact on the game. Gifts from the divine. For $100, you can buy a character a magical item. What? 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 All right, that's that's yeah. fair. I mean, a hundred dollars is a lot of money. Hundred dollars, but yes. I do I get to determine what they, it could be like a, de a decanter of endless water. <laughs> well, that could come in handy. Yeah, if you're thirsty. Yeah. I can think of a lot of things to do with that. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, fun thing: our high sto top three high stoners. Uh, number one gets 
A nice dice vault from Helen and Claw. Wow. Nice. That's got those uh, magnetic clasps yeah, on it, magnetic too. Magnetic clasps. Real nice. Yep. Smells good. Really good. Smells good. <laughs> yeah, smells good. And you get a 3D printed, or not 3D print, laser and cut dice tower. Uh huh. Um, our second highest donator of the day will receive one of these dice towers and our uh, nice, shiny, pearlescent, teal extra dice that I'm going to be using nice. this entire day. So if they donate and, and they're the second place, yeah, the second, second highest donor, yeah. they get the dice tower and they get dice that were actually used in the Gygax house. Think yeah. about that. That's got yeah. some good mojo behind right. it. Oh, yeah. And third place gets a dice tower. Nice. So, all right. All right, who's ready to play? So, yep, for, the, for the first game, um, this is this is D&D 5th edition, so uh, if anybody has a problem with that, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, um, I'm happy to say that uh, I don't often run things that are from pre-published materials. No judgment on people who do. I just grew up playing homebrew stuff. So, But for this instance, we are playing in the Forgotten Realms. And this uh, storyline will be taking place in Alagon, which is the capital city and the, the biggest port city in the country of Termish. So for those who don't know, Termish is kind of a, an interesting place. It's a, it's a epicenter of different cultures around the Sea of Fallen Stars. So there are a lot of different people, especially because Alagon's a port city, you get a lot of different people that meet there. So here's the, the setup for the adventure. Um, this takes place um, in Termish, and it's at the end of the fall season. Um, it's a time of prosperity. And you guys are all fifth level. You are all local heroes in, in the region of Termish. You've had adventures throughout the area, um, and you've, you know each other from mutual adventuring companies and from different kind of one-shots and side quests that you guys have done together over the years. But you've never, none of you have ever been invited to the mayor's banquet. And the mayor's banquet is the most exclusive event in the region. There are people from all over the Sea of Fallen Stars who are nobles, wealthy merchants, but it's not just about wealth, it's, it's about exclusivity. Only the most privileged people are invited to this very exclusive event. Now, one of the other odd things about the mayor's banquet is that Nobody ever really knows what goes on there. Nobody's ever openly talked about what happens at the mayor's banquet. There's a lot of hushed rumors and whispers about magnificent things being revealed and um, sometimes other things. Sometimes there's whispers of various debaucheries and other things that occur at the banquet. But you've heard all these things, but you yourselves have never attended until you received, each one of you received, an invitation, which has the seal of the mayor on it. So you are very excited. Um, and in your invitation, you've been told um, that you are more than welcome to bring whatever adventuring gear, weapons, or armor you feel you would like to bring. And that's where we're going to begin. So it is the evening of the banquet. Um, and I am going to assume that every one of you is bringing whatever you'd normally bring on any adventure. Um, if you're so inclined to say what you're not bringing, that's fine, but I'm gonna assume that anything on your character sheet is what you're bringing. So, the Mayor's Manor is a huge, it's almost like a citadel. It's, it's got this really beautiful, gorgeous, maybe not so functional for defense, but really beautiful, gorgeous marble, white marble wall around it. And then there's a beautiful landscaped garden inside and fountains and there's, you know, weeping willow trees and little ponds and stuff and flowers everywhere. It's beautifully, you know, manicured landscaping. And in the center of this complex is the manor itself. And again, it's this, it's this ornate, huge columns, white marble everywhere. Um, and it's, it's probably one of the most beautiful and well-kept buildings in the entire city of Algon. So as you guys approach the gate, um, you see that there is a line of people 
waiting to get in, showing their invitations to some guards that are at the front gate. And in this line, just as you're casually kind of like in line, you notice a, quite a diverse range of people. So the majority of them look like very, you know, well-maintained upper class nobles and maybe some wealthy merchants. They're, they're dressed in fine silks and, you know, some of them have like brocade tunics and kind of the typical what you would see to be like wealthy people attire. But you notice that the, the range of races is also just as diverse. You see almost every race that you've ever heard of is, is represented. There are dwarves, halflings, gnomes, elves, half elves. Um, you, you see um, there are even a few half orcs. There, there's just a whole variety, plenty of humans. Um, not many dragonborn, um, but there are a couple. Um, you also see other people who you would assume are kind of like you. There are some people who are in line wearing full suits of plate mail armor. There are other people who have, you know, lighter armor, but like multiple weapons on. There's a person who's wearing no armor. He just has a great ax strapped to his back and he's wearing a loincloth. You, you see this human and he looks um, like he is Tarami. He has like a dark mahogany skin and he has like long braided hair. And he basically looks like um, a Tarami barbarian from the Western Plains of Termish. So the variety of people who are in line with you holding invitations is, is a little bit surprising. And as, as a few minutes go by, you guys make your way up and the guards each ask you to see your invitations. They take a look at your invitation, they take a look at you, they discuss with each other and they welcome. And then they, they let you go in. Mm. So each one of you guys now are inside the gate. And you notice just milling about in the gardens are all these guests. There are servants rushing around bringing drinks and food and kind of like cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and people are kind of, you know, socializing. Um, so you guys find yourself in the inner courtyard. Food? Yes. What sort of food do we see here? So you see mostly tiny, like petite, fancy little finger food. Um, and there's, there's crops of people walking around with, with, you know, trays of food and you can help yourself to anything. There's a lot of like little, you know, fancy seafood morsels, like little shrimp roll-ups and fish bites and stuff like that. Um, but you also see, I mean, there's everything. Beef, there's little, little cups of like rice with seasoning and spices on it and little veggie platters. Is there anything not no, anything out of the ordinary happening around us? Like things you say there that we've heard rumored to happen. Yeah, here. so the funny thing is is there's nothing odd that you see. You notice that no one's gone inside the manor yet. The main doors to the manor are closed and there are two well-dressed guards, not in armor, but just very nicely dressed, like with with like tunics and like cloaks and stuff no weapons on them, but they're standing there. They have like white gloves on. They almost look like, like Mater D's almost. They, they're standing in front of the doors, just like kind of patiently and attentively waiting. And you don't see anyone going into the manor yet. People are kind of just milling around and chit-chatting and talking. So is this an open air courtyard? Yes, so you are out in, out in the gardens, out in, it's like, uh, you know, there's trees here and there. There are benches to sit down at. There are a few kind of like pedestals that are almost like tall like cafe tables where people are kind of gathering and okay are there walls are there battlements and guards walking the walls nope the walls around the entire complex are are mostly decorative like they're white marble walls like they're 10 feet tall pretty okay. much anyone could hop them no battlements you don't see any armed guards and the building itself is similar the building is, is precisely similar. The main double door entry is just has two people, two guys in suits basically, um, that are standing there guarding. Um, you see through the windows that the interior is lit up. You see like the flickering of, of lamps uh, on the inside, but there are draperies, um, kind of sheer draperies that, that cover up the windows. So you can't really see what's going on inside, but the doors to the manor have not been opened yet. Perhaps we should get over by these doors so that we can be first in line and 
I would like to go over to the window, see and kind of see if I can look into any of the windows. Okay. Well, you mentioned the thing about the doors, and you kind of drift off over to the side, and you kind of get closer to the windows, and as you get closer, the, the, the draperies are kind of sheer, so you can see people moving around, but go ahead and make a perception check. So four plus... Anyone want to donate to help John not fail that perception check? <laughs> <laughs> You see people milling about, John. You can't precisely see what they're doing. How many other dragonborns are there here? There's one. There's one other dragonborn, and he seems to be uh, someone with a some kind of a military pedigree. He's not wearing full plate. He just has like a uh, plate breast plate on, but it's like very well polished. Maybe more decorative than functional. And you notice he has several like insignias on the plate. He seems to be talking to a group of humans um, around one of those little pedestal tables. What color of dragon? He's actually purple. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go up to that uh, that barbarian. Yeah. You said before. Yeah. Because I'm I'm a halfling barbarian mm -hmm. druid, so I'm rocking the same the same little loincloth kind of deal that he is. I go up to him, hey, same, same. He, he turns and looks at you and he smiles. And you now notice that he, he has pointed ears. He appeared to be a human, but he's got slightly pointed ears and his eyes have sort of a little bit of a bluish purplish color to them. He looks at you and he smiles. He's like, greetings, my friend. What is your name? I'm Queen. Ah, Gawain. Yeah? Welcome to the banquet. It is Thanks. good to see someone else who appreciates the natural form as, as much as I do. My name is Muntu Wakuda, but you can call me Wakuda. Wakuda? Yes. So, have you been here before? This is my first time. I have mm. heard many things about it, but I have never been to the banquet. Mm. Trying to figure out what's going on. Mm. To me, it just looks like many rich people who are at a party, but who knows? The invitation said that you can bring weapons and armor. I do not need armor, so I bring my weapon, just in case. Same. Ah, well met. Yes. Let's get a drink. He yes. summons over one of the walking waiter people, and he, there's like a tray with glasses on it and a bottle, and he's like, thank you. He just takes the whole bottle, and he, he takes a glass and pours you a small glass and then he starts kind of drinking up, from the bottle. It. Yep. Tink. Glug glug. <laughs> so, do you in fact walk over by the door? I do. Okay. I walk you over by these white start, gloved guys. Yeah, you start moseying over there. Um, when you get like within, you know, 10 feet, one of them like looks at you and nods. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Welcome to the banquet. Yeah, what's uh, behind the doors there? Ah, yes. Well, they are just preparing for for the feast. Yes. Will they be long? Ah, he's like, it should not be long, sir. Uh, we are still in the first course, so you are welcome to enjoy the hors d'oeuvres and cocktails that have been presented, and the bell will ring when the second course begins. For Hard the to fill up on these tiny snacks. I uh, was hoping for something a little more substantial. Sire, I assure you, you will not be disappointed. The feast is renowned throughout the region. There will be more food than any singular person could possibly eat in one evening. And the other guy like just goes, <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. We'll see about that. They have a very posh kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of haughty tone as you, as you pick up on their vibe. But, uh, but yes, he, he says, yes, uh, we assume it will not be very long. All right, well, I'll stay close. Indeed, indeed, sir. Uh, there is no need to wait in a line, however, I will inform you, sire. There's, uh, every, every guest is uh, issued a table assignment. You have a seat reserved for you, sir. All right. So I want to stay back and keep an eye on him walking up to the window and see if anybody else seems to be watching him. Okay. The reaction of the guards. You make a perception roll now, Larry. Sure. Back up to the backup. Yeah. Uh... 
11 plus 4, 15. Okay. So you notice that when when John walked up and kind of peeked in, there was a, like, a, a, you notice like one of the servers who was like walking around with a tray kind of did like a side eye and like looked and then like stopped for a minute and pretended to like rearrange empty glasses on the tray. Okay. And then when he walked away, she was like, and then she kept going. I wanna. You picked up on, on that little bit of spy okay. versus spy. I wanna get within earshot range okay. of that person. All right. I'm not gonna have you make a stealth roll. So you just kind of casually roll over there. Um, you notice that she goes over to like a little station where there's people filling up glasses and like refilling things and refilling trays with like little food things. And you, you notice that she goes up to another one of the servers and like whispers in their ear and the server nods and like grabs a tray and just walks over in another direction. But you notice that he's basically working the area around where John now is. Okay. Uh... Not like obviously suspiciously, but just he seems to be serving people, but with John and his peripheral vision. Okay. Did anybody else observe the two of them communicating? That you're gonna make a perception check for. Uh, 14. You don't think anybody else near that area saw those two servers okay. communicating. All right. I will uh, go up to the first server and say, hey, what are you doing later? She's like, um, working. Really late. She's like, this event goes I really, know, nine really. Charisma, so it's a minus one on that. She, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like, it's, it's an all night event, sire. I, I will be here. How about tomorrow? Um, I'll probably be sleeping during the day, sire. I, I apologize, but I must go serve. She takes her tray and walks away and nods and then walks away. Okay. Uh -huh. You see, she goes to like a different area and is serving drinks, doesn't seem to be concerned with the area that he's in. Okay. So you, what do you do? I'm gonna walk up to the, the Dragonborn. Okay. Um, does he seem to be, is it a he, first of all? Yes. Okay. Uh, does he seem to be trying to entertain the humans or what is his interaction with the humans going on right now? Um, roll insight. 14? Yeah, you you feel like it's it's less him entertaining and more like maybe they are kind of glomming onto him. Like he he seems to have a very charismatic aura and it's more like the humans are all like fanboying around him and they're like, yes, general, tell us more. You know, like mm -hmm. he seems to be tell like he as you're walking up, he's finishing up some story and they're like, What a what a magnificent tale, General. That is truly, truly a, a quite an accomplishment. And, and he notices you, and he's like, good evening. Hi. What, uh, what brings you to the party besides the invitation? Ah. Uh, well, I have come to the banquet every year for the last five years, so this is just a pleasure of mine to be able to come and celebrate the wellness of Alagon and, and the mayor's prosperity for our city. So are the are the rumors that I've I've heard true about what happens? The rumors, uh, well, let's just say that the banquet is quite an experience. It is your first time? Yes. Mm. You will have a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. And you, my friend, what is your name? Um, I don't think anybody is donated, so uh, <laughs> right now, let's call me Rian. Rian, I am General Aki. It is a pleasure to meet you. you he takes well. your hand if you offer it. Sure. And he clasps the top side of it. Truly a pleasure. 
I hope you enjoy yourself this evening. Perhaps we will be seated together, who knows? Perhaps. I hope yes. you have a good evening as well. Yes, indeed. And around this time, all of you hear, ding, 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 ding. There's a sound of some bells being chimed and everybody kind of like looks up and there's some like excitement murmurs. What's that server that's watching him doing? You notice she like, when that bell goes off, pretty much all the servers start going back to the station and like dropping their trays off and kind of like unloading glasses. And at the sound of that chime, the two men in the suits open up the double doors. And one of them stands and he says, greetings guests, welcome. Please come in, course two is about to begin. Your table assignments are inside the foyer. And he holds the other door open and you see guests starting to walk in. You're right up there. So you see the, the entrance foyer is magnificently well lit. And you notice that there are some decorative sconces and a few lanterns, but the majority of the absurd quantity of light coming out is clearly magical. It's, and, and yet softly lit, much like this room. Um, but you notice that there's a huge long table in the foyer with little cards and everybody's names are on the cards and there's like a table assignment. So as you make your way in, you notice that you find your, your name pretty easily and you find a card there. So no blank ones? Name me already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will grab my card, whatever okay. it is. And I will All right. And what about the rest of you table. guys? I'll do the same. Now, are we assigned to the same table? Are we? Well, that's and, what she'll have to find out, Alex. So I grab my name. Okay. And I watch And people. you notice your friend is at the same table as you. Okay. So this, all the servers have wandered away from... All the servers are, are cleaning up, basically. They're okay. going around gathering glasses and, and plates and stuff like that and kind is, of cleaning up outside. Is there a table where I notice that more of the higher up people are all gathered? So as you guys get your cards, you proceed through the double doors into the ballroom, which is filled with tables, white linen tablecloths, like expensive um, china and silverware, like real silver, and and there are like white gloved servers in, uh, attending all around the room and helping people get seated. And you see, actually, the table assignments are very mixed. It would seem. You see some tables where there's like the wealthiest of the wealthy, like silk dressed people, sitting with kind of more rough and tumble sailors and. You, you see quite a mix. There's there's a lot of different um, table mixing happening. You guys are at the same t table. Everybody else going in for table assignments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You find yourselves all seated together. So six of you are there, and there are two empty seats at your table, which are waiting to be filled. Is there any food on the table? Not yet, but there are four bottles of wine and glasses, and you do see people at adjacent tables are like pouring glasses of wine. The servers, the white glove servers are actually serving the wine. I will go right ahead and help them out by starting to <laughs> serve our table myself. <laughs> All right, you, you don't wait, you just start serving up the wine. And as more and more people are coming in and tables are getting filled up, you see um, two people walking up towards your table. One of them is a uh, high elf um, who appears to be, she has like a kind of like a tan skin, brown eyes, dark, dark kind of curly hair, long curly hair. Um, and she's very well dressed. Uh, does anybody have history as a proficiency? If so, go ahead and make a history check. No? No. No, you guys are all screwed. No. Um, <laughs> um, those of you who may have traveled around might notice that this particular garb and maybe the ethnic appearance um, might seem to indicate that she could be from the southwest of Faerun, possibly like Kalimashan, like that area. Um, 
and she also has these, like, basically henna tattoos, like, on her hands, very ornate tattoo work going up her, her wrist and her arm. She's bejeweled. Um, it's hard to determine her age because she's a high elf, but she appears to be in her prime. Um, the other person coming to sit down at your table is a halfling. Uh, and she is actually, looks pretty, let's just say pretty old. Like she's seen a few years as a halfling. Um, but she's very elegantly dressed and she looks to be more dressed in the traditional noble wear of people from Alagon. Um, she has like a, a tunic and a, a, a little like cape and a nice, nice like um, skirt that's like starched, you know, not, not like a ballroom gown where it's got like a frame, but it's, you know, kind of starchy clothing. So they come up to your table and uh, before they sit down, they introduce themselves. The high elf introduces herself to you. She looks out over you guys and she says, good evening. You are first time here to the banquet? Ah, I am Vesra. I am pleased to make your acquaintance. And uh, this is, she looks down at the halfling and the halfling's like, I am Madame Siana. Welcome. This is not my first time, though. <laughs> and the old halfling lady pulls herself up onto the chair and sits down and she's like, you there, you seem to be proficient in pouring wine. Would you help an old woman out, please? Of course, of course. Thank you. I'll pour them both a glass. You know, the mayor does not skimp on this, the quality of the, the vineyards. He is a smart man. How's he do with beef? You will not be disappointed, my hungry friend. Excellent. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Vezra smiles and she's like, so, uh, who are you? I am Rion. Hmm. Uh, and you, my friend? I'm Gwen. Yes. And uh, when you introduce yourself, Sienna looks over and she's like, you are a handsome young man, you. <laughs> Thank you. I like you. Very like beautiful you. yourself. Yeah, you flatter me. I was beautiful in my youth, but now I am old lady. But you know what is better than beauty? Mm. Mountains of gold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And you, my friend, who are you? I am John. The, the, uh, my colleagues call me the wolf. Ah, the wolf. I, mm. I have heard of you. You, uh, you have, you are part of the campaign. Uh, against the orc tribe to the west in the mountains. Yes. Yes. Alagan owes you great favor. This would have been a very costly war. Uh, that campaign saved the treasury a lot of money. Well done. Um, and then Vezra looks at you and she's like, so, uh, my friend, you, you seem familiar. How do we know each other? Hmm. Perhaps well, you worked the trade routes. I've been around a little bit. Help out where I can. I go from place to place and heal as much as I can when people are injured or... Oh, healing is good. That's a, that is a great trait to have. Uh, excellent. In my home country in Kalasham, we say that uh, there is no illness which cannot be healed by the power of the Pashas. Indeed. Yes. Is she wearing any jewels? Yes. A lot. I'll remark on them since I have a jeweler's background. I'll mention how nice they are. In fact, um, I'm not even going to make you make a proficiency check. You notice that she has possibly one of the largest and well-cut amethysts on her, on her neck that you've ever seen. Is it you, the... You're like, that's worth thousands of platinum, not even gold, platinum. Like, that's just a big fat stone and it's cut perfectly. Is it the kind of jewel that's so distinctive it would have a name or be famous? You, mm, you know what? That's worth a check, go ahead. You get to add in your proficiency bonus and intelligence. Oh, I'm 20 plus. Okay. 
you feel like you've heard rumors about a princess from Kalimshan, um, one of the Pasha's daughters, who was given a family heirloom. And that amethyst was called the White Cloud. Well, that's the White Cloud there, isn't it, that you're wearing? She seems shocked, genuine. She's like, oh, you know my family's jewel. It's beautiful, quite beautiful. It's renowned. Thank you. I am blessed to be the recipient of it. My father entrusted it to me when my brother passed away in the battles against Waterdeep during the trade wars four years ago. My belated condolences. Thank you. She seems intrigued by your by your recognition of her stone. And and you, my friend. I'm Greaser. Greaser, yes. Pleasure to meet you. Yes. It says here my character is not does not care for wealth or <laughs> positions of people. <laughs> that works out so perfectly. <laughs> so. <laughs> She's like, I see. Well met. And you, sire. Well, you've probably heard of me. Have I? Well, most people have. You call me, well, uh, my name is Fazbolt Torion. You are Fazbolt Torion? Yes, I am. I'm sorry, I envisioned someone of a different stature, perhaps, but it is a pleasure to meet you. I get that all the time. Your, your reputation precedes you. I, I find myself in good company. She raises her glass. Cheers, my friends, to the banquet. May we all have a wonderful and exciting evening. I want to sniff mine before I drink it. Ah, go ahead. Before we even cheers. Make a perception check. the whole 19 plus... Uh, 19 plus something equals over four. 20. Yeah. Okay, 23. You sniff it. It does not sound like poison. It does not sound like poison? <laughs> I like to do that. It's... Um, <laughs> it doesn't smell like poison. Okay. Does it smell it like It smells wine? like really good wine. I already drank you, the whole thing. So <laughs> she's like, a toast, and you just go on. <laughs> so you chug yours. Good thing that there's three more bottles around. Okay. Um, so I'm you two hear, glasses in by now, too, at least. And, and you guys are kind of now, like, settling in, and you notice that all the other tables seem to be filled. You hear the ding. It's like a different chime, but you notice all the servers like emerge with platters and the other servers start like each table has this platter and they start going around and they start ladling this food out onto your plates. And the first round is like, like these cute little like tender, maybe it's kind of like sushi. It's like raw fish and shrimp. But there's also cold cuts. There's like smoked meats and salted meats, and then there's cheese and there's bread. Better <laughs> getting there. And so they serve out this kind of first layer of food, and people start eating, and they're they're kind of chit chatting. You hear people at other tables adjacent to you talking. I want to drink an eye on any servers that are serving him. Okay. Um, well, without making a perception check, I'll tell you that these servers are not the same ones that were outside. Right. They're dressed differently, and they're, you don't recognize the ones, the two sure. that are attending to your table for this course. Sure. Okay. So um, the first round comes up, the little, you know, cheese, cold cuts. Old Madame Sienna is like grabs some butter and spreads it on the bread and just makes takes some cheese and takes some of the cold cuts and starts making like a, a little sandwich for herself and then she's like and eating it. So uh, meanwhile, Vezra is like, so what what business are you all in? I myself represent my father's business interests from Kalimshan. I come here as an envoy on his behalf to negotiate trade deals with the merchants of Alagon. Well, as you know, I'm a healer and also a jeweler. Yes. I admire your knowledge of jewelry. It is quite extensive. You flatter me. 
Do you have a business here in Alagon, or do you travel for your work? I travel quite a bit. I'm just here by the invitation, and uh, well, I'm damned hungry, i got to tell you. You will not be disappointed, my friend. There are four more rounds of food at the feast. Yeah, I keep hearing about that. Yes, it's magnificent. So as you guys are kind of like, you know, having a little bit of this and that, uh, if anybody wants to break into a conversation or do anything else, you let me know. Otherwise, a few minutes pass, ding dong ding, another round of waiters come, they clear off all that stuff and then they bring another round. And this time, it's hot meat. It's all of the meats. They have pork, they have chicken, they have beef, they have veal. No, they, yeah, they have all of the meats. They have venison. There's some white meat that tastes like chicken and you're not sure what it is, but it's good. Is it already sliced? They, they bring it to, it's like almost like a, like a Brazilian steakhouse. They bring it to the table and there's like a, a master knife man who like, cuts the piece off for you and like you can select the the degree to which it's done yeah, and then there's a spice guy that comes over and he just <laughs> sprinkles some spices on it for you are they having any trouble at all cutting it no okay. no they have very sharp knives like extremely no, sharp don't. not that sharp <laughs> or are you unsharpening their knives no oh. <laughs> i just wanted to offer to help if they needed it so at one point you notice like the knife man goes to like he has to like rehone his knife Oh, here, and I'll take out my sword and pour some wine on it and wipe it off with the tablecloth. And You want it thin? How about this? And I'll carefully put my finger on the side and just cut the thinnest possible slice of meat and wipe it back off on the tablecloth and put it back. Uh, don't put that away yet. Uh, cut me a real thick piece of the beef, would you? Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll just carefully cut one that's about that thick. And you see both of the servers are simultaneously shocked and appalled. They're like... <laughs> And they're like little looking around to see if they're going to get fired for this. And then they're like, thank you, sire. And I'll, then they flop take it. I'll, I'll flop it down on my sword and just reach it over and yes. plop it on his plate and wipe it back off on the tablecloth. The, uh, Put it away. You notice Madame Sienna is getting a kick out of this. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's just laughing and like slapping the table. Well, meanwhile, Vezra is like, uh, hmm. <laughs> I'll laugh along with her and lean over and say, <laughs> I'd love to do that. Yes. Um, so shortly thereafter, you guys, you help yourselves. They, they come back another time with meat. And then there's another ding dong ding. There's another platter. This time there's like noodles and rice and vegetables and more meat, like carefully spiced meat and platters of food and more bread. And there's little blocks of cheese. Keep going. Does anybody seem to be standing up? Oh yeah, people get up and they walk out all the time and then they come back to their table. Okay. Has anyone switched tables? Yes. Okay. You notice that at a certain point in time, like between the courses, it seems like people get up, they walk out, a few minutes later they come back in. Um, but during one of those times, you noticed a man also a high elf, um, very well dressed with like a long black satin cape with like a red interior, like Dracula, but he's not a vampire. I'm just going to say that. Um, <laughs> but you notice this like tall high elf guy with like white hair gets up from one table and he goes out to the bathroom, the hallway, and he comes back, but he sits at a different table when he comes back. Do we know what the mayor looks like? And is the mayor there? You... None of you guys have actually ever seen the mayor in person. And oddly enough, there's no, it's not like a wedding where there's like a head table and like, there's the mayor and his wife. All the tables are the same. They're all spread out through different spots. Huh. During, so where's the host? I'll say out to the others who've obviously been here before at our table. Vezra looks up at you and she's like, the mayor and his wife. They're right over there. And she points to a table that's like 20 feet away from you guys. Like it's, it's relatively close to you. Oh. And over at that table, you see a dwarf wearing like armor. You see a half orc also wearing armor. Um, you see a man who looks like maybe 
you know, he's like a shopkeeper or like a tradesman. Like he's just wearing like kind of like brown tunic, you know, and like a potato sack for pants, like nothing special. And then you see like a couple noble people, you know, like nicely dressed noble people. And then you see a magnificently dressed man and a gorgeous and amazingly dressed woman. So they're like, and she points to like the mayor and his wife. And so the mayor and his wife are both Tarami. They have like, you know, mahogany skin. She has like long braids, like with like, gems and stuff in the braids. She's got like a beautiful necklace and rings and bracelets. And she's wearing like these, this like multi-piece silk outfit with like a silk top and, and like a, it's like a gorgeous gown. And then he has like a suit basically, like everything on his suit is threaded with gold. Um, he has like shorter cropped hair, but you could still see, you know, like some gray in it. So he's like a little bit a little bit older. Both of them are human. Um, but they, they seem to literally be sitting at a mixed table, just like you guys or anybody else. Like they're not at any special thing. And like, they're, like I said, there's like a dwarf, there's like a half orc in armor to some commoner man, and then a couple of nobles. Are there an, any empty seats at the table? At his table? Yes. Interestingly enough, yes. The seat that was vacated by that white haired High Elf is open. Okay, I am going to get up, kind of follow the lead, and go out for like two seconds, and then come back in and sit down at that spot instead. Okay. Well, you, you get up, you excuse yourself, you go out to the hallway, and there's an attendant there, and he's like, oh, my lady? And he gestures to a, a door, and you, it, you see that the door kind of seems to go into a private room that's maybe like 10 by 20 and there are little stalls. It's basically like an outhouse that's integrated onto the side of the house. But it is the most amazing bathroom you've ever seen in your life. It's like white marble floors, white marble, and there's like actually a pump and there's like a female attendant like pumping. So people like go up and they have like washing their hands and there's little oils and soap and spices. It's, it's like the most elegant, it's like nicer than anywhere you've lived and it's a bathroom. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> So, yeah, you, you do what you gotta do, you come out, they, they have like a nice clean white linen towel, you dry your hands, and then you go back in. And that seat is still open. All right, I'll take that seat then. Okay. You walk up mm -hmm. and uh, you go to the seat and you notice like everybody at the table kind of looks over at you. Um, the half orc looks at you like, like who this? Yeah. But um, doesn't say anything. And then the man who you assume is the mayor looks up at you and he's like, well, greetings, my friend, come sit. And uh, by whom's uh, acquaintance do we have your, I messed that up. He's like, who are you? You know. <laughs> yes. um, my name is Rion and I am a, a wanderer of the lands around. Um, I thought I'd come introduce myself and Thank you for inviting me here. Oh, yes. And you notice he never broke eye contact you with you when he was listening, but the wife, like, leaned in and was like, Let's go. And he's like, Ariane. And he looks at his wife and nods, and he's like, Yes, welcome. Welcome. This is your first uh, time here at the banquet. Yes, welcome. Please sit. We were just uh, digesting that last course uh, one can only eat so much <laughs> but we must make sure that all of the guests are fed during the feast yes we are nearing the end of the second course so save some some room because uh, the third course will be quite festive it will be the dance in the ballroom you look around and you're like I thought this was the ballroom nope. um, so the other people at the table, like I said, you, you see kind of like a gruff dwarf who's not drinking wine. Uh, you notice that there's a small wooden cask. It looks like maybe he brought his own beer to the party. And that's what he's drinking. Um, the half-orc is not drinking anything. In fact, um, he's just staring at you. Not in a mean way, just like a... Okay. Kind of measuring you up. Does anyone besides the half-orc look uncomfortable 
Um, no. Violet, okay. Because no. uh, there's only one other dragonborn here, so yeah. I was wondering if there's any in last week. So um, the mayor's wife introduces herself to you, and she's like, Rian, I... I am Marisha Watami Umada. It is a pleasure to have you here. So glad that you accepted the invitation. Why? I am sure that you will have a, a splendid evening tonight. Thank you for having me here. I, I am very honored for the invitation. Yes, and your friends, they, they are here, are they not? Yeah. She looks around the room and she says, oh yes, over there, yes, I see them. I'm so glad that they also joined us tonight. Yep. The mayor has a, she looks over at her husband and smiles. The mayor has a very special event planned for the fourth course. It will be tremendous. Yes, yes, my love, your program tonight exceeds all of the other banquets. And, and he's like, you flatter me, my wife. I am, I am eager to see how this night proceeds. <laughs> Uh, and during that like little repartee, repartee, the the half orc was like, just like staring at you the entire time, no emotion, just. Um, so back to you guys. Did anybody else? Another course of food comes, and this time, it is very. It's it's like pastries, cakes, pies, little fruit tarts. Like it's just like the most epic dessert panel that's ever been brought before you. Um, did anybody else, I'll just kind of scan the room, pay attention to her going over to the mayor. Take mm, any make a perception check. Any particular extended notice? Ooh, a 19. Yes. The white-haired high elf with the Dracula cape that got up and left and vacated that seat and then sat down at a different table, he's clocking her like the entire time, just like looking over at the mayor's table. Okay. After this course, and before this course, and when I see it come, the, the new one coming around, yeah. I'll go back to the table, act normal. Uh, but I want to make a lap of the room. Okay. Uh, see if I can overhear uh, anyone talking about nefarious or you know, any, anything that's out of the ordinary, the stuff that we've been hearing about, uh, or anything that is planned for the rest of the evening. Okay, you start making your way around. You're gonna make a perception check. Two. Anybody wanna buy Alex a reroll? <laughs> Anybody wanna buy Alex an advantage? Okay, so. You're walking around and you hear Nothing. you hear plenty of just, you know, chatty chatty talk talk table talk kind of stuff, but nothing that really jumps out at you as being like mm, kind of just wanted to get away from everyone anyway. You know? <laughs> I'm more of a solo wander kind of guy. Yeah. I'm not don't really care for, you know, people's ranks and positions or but while well, you're circling around and you're kind of like listening to people Make another perception check. 20. Really? Yeah, yeah, man, 20? Uh -huh. Oh, man. Session. Day. Oh, man. Let's put that right there in the center. Good one, man. <laughs> These new dice. One extreme to get. You're right. Yep. Say so a zero <laughs> on the last roll, we're good. Man, you ruined it. <laughs> See, you know what? He doesn't like being around a bunch of people. You know, it says right here. You know, he's a solo guy. Ra Raider likes to go out. So here's what happens, Alex. Somebody bumps into you. One of the servers bumps into you. Okay. What class are you? Barbarian. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nomad barbarian who cares not for... So here's what happens. You're, you're like walking the perimeter and you're like looking at people and kind of listening to people but trying to be low-key about it. And then one of the servers bumps into you and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, my lord, and she like keeps walking. But you notice something. 
in your scantily clad appearance. You noticed something was attempted to be tucked into your belt, but you noticed that that something was tucked into your belt. And that something was this. Nuh-uh, no meta, Mark. It's not a phone number, I'm just checking. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> it's an address, 330 Center Street. <laughs> um, so here's here's what you find. Now, my question is, do you literally stop in character and like, hey, what's this, and read it? No, no. As, as so I, fill me in. What do you do? You know, as, as, I, said, like, as I said before, in between courses, I'm going to make a lap okay. before the desserts come. Sit down like normal. Just kind of act like I'm stretching, you know, okay. trying to digest some food. Mm -hmm. When the, I see the next course coming out, I will then go to my table, and then after uh, after I have some small portion, yeah, I will then get up, go to the restroom, okay, and then read this, okay, return so, to, return to the party, and then maybe try in to, that time, you you get your way to. You know, the men's room, and it's, again, like marble, everything. You, you have, like, a stall. There's a door and everything. You get in there, and you read it. Okay. You make your way back. Do you tuck that in with you? Like, do you have it with you still? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll put it in a, in a different location from okay. where they tucked it. Excellent. So that if, in case that was informed to anyone else that they'd search in that area, it'll be... Okay. All right. So... The dessert portion, you you have had as much eat, like like meat as you can eat. Like if you want to make a con check, I'll let you push it. But that's <laughs> that is the only way that you're gonna eat more meat, Mark. Well I rolled a fifteen. Yep. You did it. Son of a gun. All right. <laughs> turf and turf. After the dessert. <laughs> oh, you're, well. you're, after the dessert, you still got a little room for the meat side of your stomach. And you know, you, you do you ask the server or what do you? Oh, I'll uh, I'll get up and look toward the kitchen. Okay. We yeah. do have a uh, name for Alex. Yay! Oh, we got a name who's, for me. Who's naming Alex? I mean, what's uh, our what are we naming? Right, Dod. Dod, DOD Spec Ops. Ops. Yeah. My man. And Alex's name is Brol, and he gets advantage on his next roll. Oh, Dod. How do you wow. spell that? I'm gonna write down here. B R O L D. Rolled. Rolled. DOD Spec Rolled Ops. Thank you for tuning in, my friend. A very loyal friend and and patron of mine. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for donating to uh, Extra Life. That's awesome, okay. brother. Thank you. And now, Alex, you are rolled, and you you he gets advantage. Yeah. Donated fifty dollars. Wow. Excellent. All right. So I have to make it work. The next, next thing I do, I gotta make sure. It's, yeah, uh, you know which, when we uh, when we get to the meat holder, you're gonna need that. Yeah. Well, we, <laughs> well, well, the desserts out. I yes. wanna kind of wander the room myself. Okay. I, I'm looking for uh, anybody with military insignia. So of course, I have military insignia, but I'm in field gear, so it's right. subdued. So you notice? Well, the first one that you mm -hmm. saw even outside was that male dragonborn. Yeah. Um, the other one that you notice that kind of stands out is the half-orc who is sitting at the table that she now moved to. So um, uh, make a perception check to see if you see anybody else that stands out. Two. So, <laughs> all right, I'll say this. Two. You, you see, listen, you see other people with armor and weapons but none that seem to have any ranks or insignias. So there are other people, adventurer types like you guys, who have weapons or armor, but not none with military ranks that you saw. Is anybody paying attention to him as he's wandering around? Oh, good call. Roll that perception. <laughs> I don't say two. Is it good in no, it's not a two. two. Don't say For two. all my good 20s. Uh, 12 plus 4, 16. The dice hasn't been rolling very well. In fact, yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll treat whoever gets it Yes, better. there is. Make another perception check. 9 plus 4, 13. Um, 
as, as you're seeing this, so you see a female server who is walking, like carrying a tray of empties back towards the kitchen. And you notice that like he's walking and she seems like she's not paying attention and she's about to bump into him. But then at the last moment, she turns and like walks in a different direction, which just seems odd to you. That's all. That's all you notice. Okay, I want to continue and follow what she's doing there. She goes into the kitchens. Double door. Kitchens. The okay. kitchen where I was heading? Yes. So you make your way to the kitchen, Mark. Do I see him watching those servers? <laughs> Go ahead and make a perception roll. That's a lot of seam, seam, seam. Well, it's not a two, but it's close. <laughs> so no. Okay, so, but, but, you know, you're kind of more focused on getting that, like, you know that there's more spits of meat back there. You can <laughs> smell it. And, yeah. and as you approach the kitchen doors, one of the servers is like, Sire, may, may we help you? Please, uh, what, what do you need? Beef. Ah, uh, absolutely. Which table number? For, uh, was it 14? Uh, oh, let yes. me have a look. I'm pretty particular about my beef. Uh, sire, the, it would not be appropriate, Sire, for a, a man of your stature to go into the servant. Uh, oh, <laughs> we all eat our beef one sandwich at a time. Uh, 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 and he just like kind of opens the door a little bit for you and like looks around fearing for his job. Excellent. I'll so you go time. into the kitchen. You see, for like immediately off to your left, there's like a dish room basically, and there's just like. 20 people washing dishes. And then you see off to the right, there's like a serving line. And then you see beyond that, the just spits and racks of food and meat. Oh. <laughs> and there's, you see like, you see one that hasn't even gone out for service that like they didn't even bring out. It's, it's, it looks like it's still, it's, it's just, the meat has rested. It's, it's been cooked, it's been resting there, looks juicy. By Morden's hammer, I will make a sandwich. <laughs> In fact, there are many loaves of bread that haven't even been cut. You, it's all right there. Pop it up there, don't see a knife, grab my hand axe, cut it open, <laughs> split it, spit a beef, put it on there, back out to the table. All right. You, um... <laughs> No one bothers you. <laughs> I was going to have you make up your intimidation check, but like, you, at one point, like, one of the cooks comes up and he's like, uh, uh, and he just turns around and walks away. Like, he, he doesn't want any part of that. When, mm -hmm. Like, when you're using the axe, he, he backs off. A compliments. He, he leaves swiftly in fear, probably, mm -hmm. of both his job and your axe. So you, you walk out with a uh, five foot long baguette stuffed with meat. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, it's big. So Bring it back to the table, plop it down. You set around. it down like a party sandwich, you know, and just. Anyone else? Um, Vezra looks up and, uh, and she's like, oh my, no, I'm quite full. Thank you for your generosity. Very and good. Madam Siana's like, I love it. Chop me off a little piece. I, that would be splendid. Uh, yes. Chop off about five inches. Well, quite Put it generous. On a plate, slide it over. <laughs> you are my kind of man. Yes. <laughs> and she eats the sandwich, much like she did with the cold cut sandwich earlier. Um, no one seems to bother you about this. Um, Travis, yeah. you've eaten quite a lot of food. Yeah, I'm getting pretty full. Yeah. Um, I think I need to go outside and uh, puff on my pipe a little bit, have a little, a little smoke. In fact, you notice, as you're thinking this very thought, after like the dessert course has been served, you notice many gentlemen and a few ladies like stand out from their tables and like some are holding pipes and they're walking out. You go outside yeah. and there's a pleasant breeze now. The evening is well underway and there's like a nice pleasant breeze coming off the harbor and you, you catch an, uh, a whiff of some very good pipe tobacco and you see several, like a, a ring of people around you who are all like puffing on their, their pipes. And you see one elderly man like pull out his pipe and he packs some tobacco in there. And then he, with his finger, he just, and they like, ah, oh, join us, friend. 
a good pipe after a great meal, would you say? Yes. Ha, ha, ha. And they're just talking about their different pipe plans. And so what, what sort of uh, leaf do you smoke? Well, I just kind of smoke whatever I can get. Ah, <laughs> dump that out and try this. He pulls out a small yeah, pouch. He goes, mm-hmm. this is from the, some of the finest leaves from across the sea from the Dale Lands. Hmm. Could you do that fancy trick where you lit it? Uh, of course, yes. So, uh, what brings you here? Are you uh, a first timer here at the banquet? Yes, yes, I am. I've, uh, I've been around, I've fought a couple things, helped people out. Mostly, you could call me an adventurer of sorts. Yeah. But it's uh, my downtime, and I uh, somehow managed to get this letter. It's flown to me by an owl. Yes. And I uh, figured today was open. The mayor has many allies, and uh, he tends to invite those who are guardians or protectors of Tormish and uh, particularly his city of Alagon. Some say that, uh, that the mayor's uh, prosperity, his personal life and wellness is tied to that of our fair city. And I, as someone who has been in the city for decades, I would agree that the better part of the last 20 years during the mayor's reign have been full of peace and prosperity. But at times there are threats and certainly those adventurers like yourself, I assume, and some others are those who are allies to the mayor and the city and keep our land in in good graces with the gods. Exactly. I, I like to I like to go into the forest and clear it of monsters. Majority of the time I usually can get a little bit of coin out of it, but I don't need that much. Yes. I can live on very little. Yes, I see. Any gestures to your lack of clothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like I have served in the temple for many years and venerate all of the gods, but uh, I consider my own life to be blessed, as it were. And my friendship and ability to give counsel to the mayor to be a blessing of its own. Indeed. Indeed. So, what are we doing next? Ah, well, I assume in a short amount of time, when people have digested a little bit more from that mighty feast, they'll probably ring the bells and the third course of the program will begin. Hmm. The bell. You've heard of the ball, haven't you? Dancing, stuff like that. Uh, there's a little bit of that. It's really quite a fun game, actually. Hmm. And uh, why exactly were we told to bring our armor and weapons and things of that nature? I don't have much, but... (laughs) Well, that is not the third course. That is for the fourth course. Hmm. That is the masquerade. But you'll you'll find out about the splendors of the masquerade in not too long of time. Stay well, my friend, and don't drink too much. He taps out the remnants of his pipe, nods to you, and walks away. You guys are in your various positions, and you hear ding-dong, ding-dong, ding. third course shall begin. Join us in the ballroom. And you see another set of double doors past this dining hall that you're in open up. And there's a manifestly well-lit ballroom. And everybody ushers themselves in there. And there's music. You, you, as, you, as you see the doors open, you hear the sound of music. And you see this ensemble of probably 16 musicians playing music. And it's some of the greatest music you've ever heard. Just Perfect. Top, Top, yeah, it is. It's very danceable. So you see people actually start pairing off as they go in right away, and they you you see there's a little bit of an etiquette to it. Like it seems like the minute that you proceed through the door, there's kind of like a, a moment where people like walk and separate off, and then they rejoin themselves, and then they they dance. They begin dancing, and they dance kind of away from the door in sort of a circular motion almost like a roller rink. So you're you're at the entry to the ball. I'm keeping an eye on her table 
Do you get up? The mayor hasn't gotten up yet. Do you get up to go into the, the ball? If they haven't got up yet, when I hear that, I'm gonna go over and join my friend and say, oh, there you are. Mm. And then if, where is she sitting in position? Is she next so to the mayor? She can see, she's like to the right of the mayor's <laughs> wife. So it, it's like Rian, <coughs> Marisha, the mayor, the half orc. <laughs> Okay. Who's staring at you? Has he stopped at all? Yeah. No. No. He also hasn't said anything. Okay. Had I received something else along with this note? No. Not that you know of. I believe it says here that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know what it says. Yep. But you haven't received that. Okay. Then. Yet. I will be looking for the deliverer of the note. Okay. So basically the dining hall empties out and the last table to get up, when everybody else is in line, the last table to get up is the mayor. And he looks to his wife and he's like, Marisha, shall we? And she's like, of course, <coughs> of course, my love. And they get up and, and then you see like the other people at their table kind of all get up and start heading that way, except the half work who gets up and follows directly behind them. And you notice when he falls in behind him, it's it has the cadence of a soldier. Like he's in, he's in formation and he's he's got their back. And you notice that like as he walks, he's got his eyes on them. But you notice he like does the head tilt. Um, so he does stop staring at me. At yes, okay. only when they get up to leave. Okay. So you guys are there still. You're going into the ballroom. You're going in the ballroom. Everybody else going in the ballroom. Second to last table to leave would be me. Okay. I'm cutting up the sandwich. In At this point, <laughs> you have made a friend of Madame Sienna. So she's like, would you escort an old woman into the ballroom? Would you help me? Of course. Carve up this sandwich. She she takes half of the sandwich that you cut, and she just tucks it under her little half lean arm, and then she t puts her arm in your hand because she's shorter than you, and then she's like, "I am ready." In we go. You so you guys, you couple, you guys, you guys start walking in. I'll turn to the half elf and say, "You want to dance?" Um. No. <laughs> I have other appointments. Somebody wants to name uh, Travis's character. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Name Travis's character. Mordred. Hinkle. Hinklesley. Hinklesley. Mordred Hinklesley. That's a great one. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. The renowned Barbarian. <laughs> Do you eat Mordred? Do we have Hinkle's any spellcasters here? What? I have a sorcerer. Do you have anything like detective magic? No. I'm going to catch up with these two. Mm -hmm. Clark. Um, as I see them move in. Okay. So the rest of you guys go in. You notice that Re Vezra does not go in. You notice that she heads towards the ladies' room. I'll say, excuse me, I've got an appointment. <laughs> and I'll go to the men's room. Yeah. So you go out in the same hallway. You know, as she, she like kind of does the turn over her shoulder and then she goes off into the, the ladies' room. Okay. You go to the men's room. Just in case I'll take care of business. Okay. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> um, you did eat a lot of food, so um, the attendant, you know, pumps the water. He gives you some oils to wash your hands and a nice clean linen towel to dry. I'll just walk off with the towel drying my hands. And okay. I'll stick it in my. He's towel. like, oh, uh, <laughs> then you just you just walk out. So as I enter the room, yeah, I will join the unnamed dwarf cleric here. Yes, and. Well, you notice that as they're entering the ballroom, though, she separates and she's like, join me for the dance to him. And then they, like, she starts stepping away. I'll let her okay. veer off and I'll say, 
I don't dance. And then I'll back off. Hmm. Both of you make insight checks. I'm, I'm following. Natural 20. Okay. 15. As, as you conduct that communication, Mark, you feel, nay, you are certain with your natural 20 that you have just made a major social faux pas. You see... And fiercely proud of it. Madame Sienna's, <laughs> Madame Sienna's once content face, she turns back to you upon realizing that you've abandoned her at the ball. She just dro- she just lifts her arm and drops the sandwich on the floor and like <laughs> opens her eyes up and then she steps on the sandwich with her left hand. Wait, and twists it like putting out a cigarette. <laughs> and then she walks away. Your heart is broken. More because the beef was still fresh and juicy. <laughs> and now it's just floor ruined. And by the way, an attendant almost immediately, like a robot comes and sweeps it up and takes it to the trash. And you're like, oh, wait, but as, as soon as he does, yeah. the, he, he denies denies her. I, I will like kind of rush up. And since we're about the same height and we're like, it's all right. We're better together anyways. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Travis, that deserves an inspiration. Thank you. Madame Sienna is, you see like a, a look of happiness and relief that you've jumped in at just the right time. And she, she turns and proudly pulls her shoulders back and raises her arm up and, and you, you take her and begin your dance, which will be an athletics role in a little bit. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? You guys are now awkwardly he, standing together. Does he still, and you notice people are like, does come he on, go dance. Does, does he like, still have a sandwich in his hand? Yes. I'm going to, may I grab the sandwich? Yes. Take a bite of the yes. sandwich. While there's food in my mouth. Yes. I will <laughs> say something to him. Yes. So that other people can't hear me. Yes. Or, and I will relay the message of what's here. The only way you're doing that is dancing with him. I I will grab him. Yes. I will, I will pick him up. Yes. <laughs> I will do it. And I'm, I'm gonna I'm like hit his ear. Food coming out. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him what's going on. I'm gonna say your character's name. <laughs> Brold the brash. Yes. And you are indeed brash when you make this move. <laughs> you you are swept onto the dance floor with sandwich in hand. <laughs> I don't want to do this either, but I got to tell you something. And you may now (laughs) take the time while you're dancing to whisper the contents of the letter. You can share that now. Well, they're doing that. I want to find a fine young Elwood maiden to take it onto the dance floor. You easily do, and in fact, she seems she seems relieved that somebody <laughs> has asked her. Very relieved. So you you join with this maiden as the line's starting to get towards the end. Yeah. Is the the purple dragonborn still? Is he dancing? General, uh, well, General Aki. Travis, you just got a nap one on your next check. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Counteracting the inspiration. Yeah. Poor Travis. Uh, <laughs> Fenway, <laughs> you see, you. as you're looking for the, the only other dragonborn in the area, um, you see, like, as the crowd's filtering in, out from behind one of the attendants steps General Aki. He looks at you and he's like, Will you join me for the dance? Absolutely. He takes your hand, and then you enter the room, and you begin doing the dance. And you notice, for a huge man, who probably has like a 20 strength, and he's wearing a breastplate, he is very light on his toes. Like, he's got moves. You're kind of, you're kind of impressed. Like, that bulk shouldn't be able to move right, but dude has moves. Like, you feel like you're floating on air. And then you look down and realize you are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I can make that happen. Levitation. Um, but it's it's a it's a wonderful dance. Now everybody who's dancing, just for fun, make that athletics check. Sometimes we use athletics for climbing in D and D or swimming. I like to use it to make people dance. <laughs> dance party. 
They're not even one anyways. <laughs> Athletics plus six. So Tell me the dismal numbers, people. 19. Oh, wow. Well, I got roll a 13. It says I got plus six for athletics. Yeah. Right? Mark, you've been swept off your feet. <laughs> Spinning with this dwarf. Freshly <laughs> swept off your feet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's the dancing or the sandwich, but... You're happy. My feels good. I mean, you're dancing and eating a meat sandwich. So. I live life to the fullest. Yeah. That is my character that flaw. That is it. I'm, I feel you know like what, it. Alex? There you go, buddy. That was that was a clutch move with the sandwich and the dance. Low key, that was. It's a twenty there. I got you. Twenty six. John, that Woo. the elf maiden is like, she's a little bit shook by the wolf. Yeah. <laughs> the wolf is kind. Of, you know, she's like a little flush, and she's yeah. like, "Tell me more about your military exploits." She's kind of into you. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna say that. Um, you met up Sienna, yeah, cannot, Vesta, she doesn't care yeah. that you have two left feet because yep. she's old and she's like limping and dancing. Mm -hmm. she's, she's just happy that you bailed her. <laughs> but in that interaction, yeah, I haven't forgotten about you. Stand by. In that interaction, she's like, "You are a, such a nice, nice and and gentlemanly young man. I, I am so honored to to have you. Do you are you always so naked?" <laughs> She's like, I think you would look nice in a, a well manicured dress of some kind. Well, you know, most of the time I just, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, as, I'm like as hairy as like Robin okay. Williams. We just yeah. got <laughs> like we I just got a bunch yeah. of donations. <laughs> yeah. Is it more? Yeah. Is it to punish Alex for the inspiration I gave him? No. Uh, <laughs> I think somebody wanted to name Mark, but the DM has now has 10 nat ones to use. 10 nat ones? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, complication. <laughs> we, are, we are now, though. Uh, I started the day with 65. We are now at $410. Yay! Yeah, awesome. And this is just the first game, people. We got things going on all day here at the Gygax house, if you're just tuning in. I'm Bill Allen, and we're playing my original adventure that I wrote uh, for the Forgotten Realms that I never write in. But A okay. comic girl sent a donation. I think she wants to name Mark. It didn't come up in the donation stream. But, okay. Uh, I know a comic girl. Yeah. Wink, wink. Thank you, Jen. She's another one of my patrons. You can name Mark anything you want, as long as it has the quotation nickname meat in it, Jeff. <laughs> Get him. Get him, girl. Yeah. Well, uh, if you DM to Yodis, DM me on Twitch, Yodis sign, I can, I should get that right away. I have that up. So. Awesome. That is awesome. Thank you, everybody, so far. We're not even close to done, though, because here's what happens. Mm -hmm. She says, uh, next week, uh, if, you, <laughs> if you survive the fourth course, you should come to my my house. Uh, I will introduce you to a nice halfling girl. She, she's uh, one of my nieces. She's very wealthy, like me. You're a good boy. She like <laughs> does the, sh the cheek grab, and you're like, oh, let go of me. All right, Larry, you come back now from the bathroom, mm -hmm. and you see Vezra's ahead of you, and she's walking towards the ball. She stops and talks to um, a server who you don't recognize from before. And the server nods. Male or female? Male. Human. The server goes to the kitchen, comes back, and he has like a bottle, like a wine bottle, and uh, two glasses. And she nods and you, she, you see her like throw a couple gold pieces as a tip. She takes the two glasses and the wine bottle, and then she goes in, or starts, starts heading into the ballroom. What do you do? I'll run up and uh, put my arm through her. Mother. Yes, you do. <laughs> Get it. All right, so you, she has no idea. She's got the wine, and she literally, because if she like tries to resist, she's going to drop the wine glasses. So she sees you, and she's like, oh, fine. And then she goes in. You guys go in together, and she, she looks to a server, and she's like, hold these. And he's like, ah. Oh. And then she she's dances with you. She's like, you are persistent, aren't you? I rolled a 19. So, so six, Mark, seven. your name is Skidmarks. You, there it is. Meet <laughs> Skidmarks. <laughs> Meet Skidmarks, there we go. Meet Skidmarks. And Larry also gets a nat 20 on his next check. Wow. 
Good thing he didn't Thank waste you. that on the dance. But Larry rolled very well for the dance. So, Larry, you see, you feel like Vesra is actually shocked. She's like, you, you are a more than adequate dancer. Uh, this is for I'm more than adequate in many things. Well, um, perhaps we should talk more, my friend. I forgot her accent. Perhaps we should talk more, my friend. Uh, you know, in Kalimshan, we have a thousand ways to express our love. And then you keep well. dancing. <laughs> I can count that high. Yes. So you you find yourselves all dancing in a big fancy circle. And you after two or three rolls, me and Travis. <laughs> you just got rerolls? Yeah, for our next check. Man. <laughs> and Bruce from the UK. Well, now I need to roll, but you're saying that I have automatic failures? Yes. For 10. All right, Fenway, you're in charge of the count. Okay. okay. I can do that. Oh, man. Is that two? Well, <clears throat> that depends on what you guys do next. So, you notice after like the third tour that, you know, some people keep dancing, but then some people kind of break off and there's these little like cocktail tables and there's bottles of wine and there's little, uh, there's no food, but there's like bottles of wine. Yes. And you notice that like people start kind of breaking off and socializing again. So if at a certain point you decide like, I don't want to dance, you can stop and go off. You also notice that some people break off and then they go socialize and then they rejoin later into the dance with another partner. I, I'd, I'd like to find a hidden place to there are some, take the main There are some darker, shadowy parts of the room, but not that hidden, but still. <laughs> Has the mayor been dancing? Yes. Oh, the mayor and his wife are dancing and they're dancing in the same loop as everybody else. And at no point have they stopped. Your Honor! He seems to ignore you. Make I must challenge check. you to a dance-off. Make an inside check. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. I got a 10, but I believe plus three proficiency bonus, mm -hmm. plus seven on insight gets mm -hmm. me pretty high up there. Yep. You are certain that your action is going to be a massive social faux pas. I'm counting on Okay. <laughs> I just, I just wanted you to know that. Your skid gut instinct is this is gonna be not good. Now- they don't call me skid marks for nothing. Now I make a roll and I fail it. Thanks, Extra Life donors. Um, so this is what happens. The mayor does not keep his composure. And he stops in the middle of the dance with his wife. And his wife is like, what are you doing? She's like, like what are you doing? And she's like smiling and he's like, I would challenge myself to that. And then he goes, and then you see he like tries to stealthily like motion over someone, but he's like, get over here. Like, that's another one, failed. Um, and then you see two guys walking up towards you. And then he continues dancing. Well, I'll move closer to him. Yeah, Pass so as you guys move guy. up to intercept, what do you do? I will trip over my feet, stumbling into these two guys, hopefully taking them down with me. You will... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what's going to happen, Alex? There, that's going to happen, because I have two more failed rolls to make. Do I need to... Do I, I have an nope. advantage. I, you don't need to roll that. I need to roll. Save that advantage, because right. I just failed, see? All right. So you... Uh, clumsy me! Yep, clumsy you, uh, and take they him, fail take down their save, me. so they fall. You're still free to move. Do you do you kind of like try to chase after the mayor? Oh yeah, I okay. get right up near you. You like literally stop them from dancing. <laughs> now I'm a member stop. of the Lord's Alliance. Yes. It's a loose coalition of established political powers. Yes. Do I know this mayor on sight now that I'm close to him? Can I see that he is actually the mayor that I expect him to be? You've never seen the mayor. You don't have that much juice. But he does appear to be the man who you saw earlier. He also appears to be the same man who you've seen like paintings of around town. The jewels he's wearing now yes. that I'm up close. Yes. Are they real? Uh, <laughs> yes, they are. There's another one. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a quick... Uh, 
dispel magic on him. Okay, so he didn't just freeze in time when this happened. So you came up, you're scoping him out, you're gonna do dispel magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, go ahead. A little dance move. Just require a roll because of his, uh, or does this require him to? <laughs> <laughs> do you see? Does he make a, does he have to make a save? No. Oh. The I proficiency bonus gets me up to 11. Yeah. That's it? Get any other bonuses. Boy, I need a reroll from somebody. I. <laughs> not sure I can make this otherwise. You seem to have cast Dispel Magic on him, and, and nothing seems to happen. Nothing? Yeah. <laughs> so now <laughs> you, you, you just got a net one. Now <laughs> he, <laughs> for your next check for Mark. All right. So, Ooh, so now, is for failing that now he says, that. I do not know why you are being so rude, my friend. But as a guest, I will afford you one opportunity to get out of my way. <laughs> I am trying to dance with my wife. Please, do not be rude anymore. Can I get away with a detect evil on this guy? You sure could. I will do that before I get out of his way completely. Because okay. I'm backing out okay. of the way. You're backing out of the way and you're like, I'm going to summon the phone. Uh, <laughs> singing the lyrics. I'm going to have you, I'm gonna have you make... I, I, well, let me not assume this. Are you trying to be stealthy about the spell casting? Are you trying? Yes, to I'm working it into a sort of a, a yeah. breakdance. Make a deception a check for me. If you succeed the deception check, that's a not a one. It's a one. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a nat one anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. Nat so nat one. he burned up his his nat one. <laughs> so you're not sly. He's like, you could tell that he's looking at you like oddly, and he kind of steps back defensively as if he's not sure if you're like casting a malicious spell on him. You succeed in finishing the spell. You do not detect evil on this man. Okay. Hmm. I get out of the way. Okay. He and the wife continue to dance. Everybody else seems relieved that whatever social faux pas was happening is now passed. The two guys that you knocked over, Alex, get up and they're like, out of the way. And they I'm run sorry. Over. Two left feet. Two left feet. And they, they actually make a deception check. Let's see if they buy that. Twelve. You have advantage if you want to use it, if you need it. Uh, do, do I have any, let's see, deception, no, no, I have a plus three, so it'd be a 15. I don't know if I, yeah, they buy it. They're like, Pfft. and they, I'm a barbarian. They like walk you know? over and check in. They're like walking alongside the mayor and his wife as they're dancing and the mayor's like, and he like dismisses them and they go away. All right, what are you doing? Uh, I'll say to uh, Vezra, so, yeah. uh, what, what's so secret about this? What's, what's the deal? Something seems off. Oh, well, it's not everyone is invited to, well, yeah. to the banquet. Uh, it is probably the fourth course that you will find to be perhaps something special. What do you mean by that? The masquerade is probably the highlight of the banquet for most people. Masquerade? Yes. Just this. The masquerade. You will see soon enough, my friends. Well, let's see how more of this plays out. What's, uh, what? she's, she's made a complete loop with you now, and she's mm-hmm. like, come, let's stop the dancing. Although, I will give you credit. You are an admirable dancer, but we should... Have something to drink. She goes over to that table, and the attendant like nods at her, and she's like, "Do you drink wine? This is from my home city of Calipot. Ah, it is much better than the salty wine from the city of Florence. Ah, she uncorks it, pours out a glass for you. Okay, I'll take it. And pours out a glass oh. for herself. She hasn't broken eye contact with you. She's just holding the glass. 
In my country, it is customary for the man to make a toast. Ah. Look out, teeth. Look out, gums. Here it comes. <laughs> she smiles and laughs a bit, and then she drinks. I'll snip it as I bring it up. To OK. 19. It does not smell like poison. OK. I'll take it. Nor does it taste like poison. So I think it actually tastes very, uh, it has kind of a bite to it. It's a little bit spicy. Mm. A, little bit, a little bit pepper. Like his passion for this lady. Yeah. Yeah. It's spicy and exotic. All right. That's Meanwhile, you have done three rounds. And at this point, General Aki is like, you are an exquisite dancer. Come, let us sit for a moment. So he goes over to an area that's kind of like a semi-circular bench with like nice plush pillows. And he sits down and he, or he, he gestures for you to sit first. And then he sits down next to you. And he summons over a steward who brings a bottle of wine and some glasses. So what do you study? I, I study whatever is around. I am a, a traveler and a wanderer, so I, mm. I study what I can when I'm in the area. But the blessings of the dragon flow through you, do they not? Yes. You can wield and poke the weave to your will. I can. How did you... <laughs> it is my business to know things. Although I'm a military man, uh, I have had many so you gifted spell two re You got two now ones and five rerolls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my next two are now ones. It is my business okay. <laughs> to know people. And I am pleased genuinely to know you. I hope you will enjoy yourself and indulge your passions in the next course during the masquerade. What happens during the masquerade? Ah, it's very entertaining, you see. When the bell rings, we are all given keys. Each key goes to a specific changing room, and in that room is a costume and a mask that you would wear for the masquerade. And then there are many different kinds of celebrations and games and contests to be had during the masquerade. There is always a great prize, although the guests must find the prize. This is probably the reason why most people who come to the banquet are so eager to attend if they are lowborn or not particularly wealthy, because the prize is typically quite extravagant. So it's quite entertaining to watch for me, because I have no interest in claiming the prize. But some people watch, some people participate. I think that's a friend of yours. Which would you suggest that me and my friends do? Hmm. I see you as young, eager adventurers. It would behoove you to find a contest or game wherein you might also find the prize. I appreciate the advice. Indeed. Indeed. So, to our health, he raises a glass to you. He drinks it fully, sets it down. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, well, if we can't get out of this room and then I can't find a it place. It doesn't appear to have any exits. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to continue to dance. Okay. I you was going to try and get down the spare out of the thing, but... It doesn't seem like that option is on the table in this room. Travis, what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm still dancing with uh, Madame Siana. Yeah, she makes about two laps, and she's like, my hip hurts. Let's go sit down, young man. Yeah, I'm not surprised her feet aren't broken at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when, when uh, she goes to sit down... Um, we'll chat a little bit about 
what she does and maybe her niece a little bit, follow up more on that. Um, and then I'll probe her a little bit more with the questions about uh, what these next things to come might be and what I should be expecting. So she talks a little bit about her family for a little while. And then in conversation, she happens to mention well, you have some supporters, Travis. Is ain't no? Is this all that? Helen and Claude just gave you two net twenties. Wow, that nice. was their used up. There you go. Or if you really <laughs> wanted to, you can use them to cancel each other out. Oh wow! You might want to save that decision. Yeah, I'll have to save that one. As you're talking <laughs> with her, she reveals that um, she's quite wealthy, that she's lived in Alagon. Her family has been involved in the politics of Alagon for a long time. But most notably, I serve as a advisor to the treasury for the mayor. Hmm. So if you, in your adventures, if you amass some wealth, I can guide you on how to invest it better to set yourself up. That way you can marry a fine young girl and raise a family and develop your own dynasty. That is definitely what I want to do. Yes. Of course. John, what are you doing other than dancing? Anything? <laughs> I think it might be time to sit down. And As you're thinking ding. that, <laughs> ding dong, ding 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 dong, ding ding ding. That's kind of like an off tune Game of Thrones. <laughs> Anybody? No. All right. So you guys uh, hear the bells, and magical light illuminates the ballroom and another set of double doors open up. And you see attendants who have um, lists, and then there's another attendant holding a box. And then they say, the fourth course begins. Please come and claim your keys. So the box um, has like a cloth over it, and there's a little hole, so you can't see what's inside. So you see people like excitedly get up and they like walk over and they start getting in line. And you see people like, like the attendant asks for their name and, and he looks and he's like, yes. And then they reach into the, to the box and they like reach around and they're like, oh, I hope I get a good one. And they pull a key out and then they're like, oh, okay. And then they go. And they go into this long hallway that like wraps around and splits off. So you see people going in and claiming their keys one by one. I'll do it. I will as well. Okay, you tell them your name. Your name, sir? Skid meet Skid Marks. I'm yes, jeweler yes. and a healer. Here you are, in fact. You may claim your key. The attendant's like holds it down. You put your hand in, mm -hmm. reach into there. You feel a bunch of little wood chip things with keys dangling, and you grab one. Mm -hmm. You get a number. Mm -hmm. Yes. You may proceed. You will find your all the rooms are labeled. All the changing rooms are labeled. I will find the appropriate door Enjoy. for the key. And yes. So, same thing. Right behind him. And your name, sir? <laughs> Brold the Brash. Ah, right here towards the top of the list. Claim your key, <laughs> sir. Just first one. Yes. Now I'm going to mix it around. You just reach in, grab yeah. a key. Look, I got this. Uh, before I part ways with Fezra, are you... After a key yourself? Oh, of course. I would never ah, ask the masquerade. Yeah. So, so much fun guessing who's who. Perhaps tomorrow we can just see how high up the tracings are on there. Yes. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> we'll see how tomorrow looks. So she walks with you, actually, to the line to get keys. Okay. She goes first. She reaches in. Gets her key, looks at the number, shrugs, and says, perhaps we'll see each other again. And yes. she walks through. And uh, you, sir? Your name? Fazbol Torian. Ah, oh, Fazbol Yes. Uh, please claim your key. I'll reach in and grab a key. Okay. John, you go up. Yeah. Uh, your name, sir? Kind of want to keep the album made it on my arm for this. She goes with you. Yeah. She's enthralled. Yeah. The, uh, and I'm going to... As John, John Wolfmeister. Mm, oh, yes, here you are. Your key, sir. You reach in, grab a key. Yep. And you, sir. I, I go up with Madam Sienna. Yeah. 
And uh, it's Mordred, Mordred Hinglesley. Uh, Hinglesley, Hinglesley, Mordred. Yes, here you are, sir. Your key. Okay. Reach in and grab one. And he goes, ah, Madam Sienna. He doesn't even look at the list. He's like, Madam Sienna. <laughs> she reaches in, gets a key, and she's like, ah, splendid. One time I got a costume cut for a half orc. <laughs> and then she goes in with you. Um, and yes. you, Madam. Rion. Rion, Rion. Oh, yes, here. Claim your key. I'm going to go to the very bottom. Okay, you dig. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you, you finish, and they're like, oh, General Aki. The, again, they don't even look at the list. Who reaches in? And again, just like in the previous circumstance, when everybody else has gone through, you notice that the mayor and his wife claim their keys and enter the hallway. The long hallway splits off into many little branches, and you basically get a key. All of these little rooms are numbered. You go to the room that matches the number on your key, you put the key in the lock, you turn it, and it opens up, and it's like a five by five changing room with a mirror hanging on one hook is a costume hanging on another hook and a shelf is a mask. Everybody's masks and costumes look different. Wild, different, crazy colors and multiple layers and scarves and all that stuff. Some of the masks are just like little eye masks. Some of them are full face, some of them are half, some of them are half this way, some of them are diagonal half. They have feathers and horns and other antlers and crazy things, right? You imagine that if you were gonna buy one of these masks and costumes, each one of these would probably be like 25 to 30 gold, which is more money than a commoner makes in like two years. So this is a lot of money because there are like 100 people here. So unless you tell me otherwise, each one of you goes in, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. mm-hmm. Bef- while we are online, I'm going to try to mention to the group that we need to mark, try and mark the mayor so we know who he is when he comes out, or we need to keep an eye on what room he goes into so we can watch him leave. Okay. We must keep eyes on the mayor. Does everybody put on their costumes and masks? Yes. Okay. Do you leave your armor and or other things in the changing room? I I will suggest not so we know who we are. Okay. Or having uh, something. Try to put the costume on over my uh, armor. Okay. I will say this. If you're wearing light armor, you could put the the costume on over it. Even chain mail. You, You could do it. But if anybody's wearing plate, that ain't happening. So, do I need to know about that right now? Uh, yeah, that'll, 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 work, that'll work. That'll work. That'll work. We need to. We should mark ourselves. So we all. Speaking can... of marks, Skid, when you go to put on your costume, you find a letter. Okay. For you. I will also uh, pass out some of the mustard from the sandwich for everybody to mark the tip of their shoe that way we know. so that we can spot one another. Good smart. Although I, I don't feel like it'll be hard to, mark, to notice me considering I'm one of the two dragon marks, but That's probably true. <laughs> when each one of you put on your costumes, you find that and this, but not that. During the ball, did I, yes. did okay. I know? Am I able to convince the other men to come into the changing room? No. <laughs> you see that, that everybody literally goes in their own direction. I did, did I notice the waitress that I bumped into during the uh, dinner? During the ball? No. I didn't see her anywhere. They seemed I, I like, figured like she probably the, changed staff. Yeah, so they, they basically have a system where it seems like the staff for each course is unique to that mm-hmm. course. Um, and the only consistency you've seen are the door stewards. The two dudes who opened the first doors in, and then it, like those are always the door guys, those two guys that you first talked to, Mark, with the white gloves. Mm-hmm. All right, so each one of you, upon starting to put on your costume, find in the pocket of your costume a letter. I didn't get a letter yet. That's probably why I have this, John. <laughs> because I can't count. 
Can I just uh, give this one? No. I cannot. Unless you physically walk over to him and give him your letter. There will be no metagaming. If you want to share your information, you have to share it in character. I'll have to wait until after I get my costume on and come out. Okay. So, um, and by the way, it's not like you guys were like in like, we're rooms 16 through 21. Like you were spread out all over the place, okay? So by the time you get your costumes on, and this process is done, you hear doors opening, you hear other people leaving. And almost each one of you, as you're leaving your room, you see somebody else leaving their room, and you notice like some of the rooms where like the door is open and someone's coming out in their costume, they like left all their other crap. Like they left their other clothes in that room and then they close the door and lock it. And yet some rooms seem to be more like yours where like they didn't leave anything. I would have left like my ranged weapons. I'm not wearing any armor. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna slip my um, dagger into like my boot and then I'm gonna act as my quarterstaff is like part of the costume. Okay. I'll start looking around for mustard. And am I able boots. to inside check the letter? No. Yeah. Um, you could do a lot of other things with the letter. Like you could Detect history check it, you yeah. could arcane check it, you could investigate it. Investigate. Okay, what do you what do you want to know more about it? I want to know a, if it looks like a forgery, but B, if I know any of, of you know, this alliance about. Okay, make an investigation check. 14 plus three, so 19. So you're looking at this letter and it's hard to say because you don't have a basis of comparison. Mm -hmm. You've never seen the writing of the person. Um, it looks authentic. It's like fine quality paper and fine quality ink and the penmanship is extraordinarily good. From a historical perspective, you have, you've never heard of the group referenced in that letter. All right. Okay, anyone else? Yeah, I'm looking for everybody with uh, okay. mustard tipped boots. Okay. I'll be lo looking for everyone and trying to gather them, Get gather, gather together. the party. So you see this trend of people walking down the halls and like kind of spilling off from the branches of the hallways towards this, this other area. And um, the hallway then shifts, and as, as kind of people are milling out, you guys start to gather your forces. So you kind of get together, the hallway shifts, it goes a little bit further down, and then there's double doors that go downstairs into a basement level. You hear music. Travis, you can get two more net ones. Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> They Someone just has, beaten up on my boy. Yeah. Um, Poor Trav. Wesley Hinkle? Hinkley? <laughs> he Hinkle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Trav just West. taken that. All right, so, okay, so once we get the group together, together and then two yes. I will say to everybody, <laughs> hey, uh, there, was a, there was a letter in the pocket of my costume. Yeah. Check this out, and I'll show everybody. That's really weird. I had this one here. Does it look like this one? No. Mine looks like this. I'll show mine. Um, would it be possible? How many more failed checks do I have? Five. Damn it. All right. <laughs> no one notices that you guys are sitting around showing a bunch of letters <laughs> in a party. Wow. Look at this. Let's, Literally, let's no let's, one notices. Hey, now I'm done. Okay. Now that we have multiple letters, can I analyze handwriting between the letters? Yes. Good point, John. As I look at mine a little bit closer, I'll, I'll do an investigation check, which I have a natural one on. Thank you. <laughs> and then I'll set it on fire by accident because I'm trying to like see if there's some hidden hidden stuff on it. It's and then I accidentally <laughs> light it on fire and it just goes up. Okay. <laughs> so I don't have a letter anymore. Yeah, but you also I burn up. You also though, burn so. up your your ones. <laughs> Can I get your guys' letter? Only if you don't give him the him. Yeah. <laughs> that was his, this is mine. What did you say? Ours was the same. Uh, so literally, I'm going to say this. 
You guys have three minutes of real time to compare all your letters in the game and outside of the game, okay? Because somehow five different people <laughs> didn't notice that you're standing around in a circle like, oh, look at my letter. So you guys got three minutes of real time to do this. Timer's what up. If, all right, we have two similar ones from the Alliance of Algorn. Uh, we have one, and these say that the mayor's been poisoned. Yep. They also say there's an antidote. The, uh, this one says the mayor is an imposter. Uh, it looks like it's in different script. Mine said he was an imposter, that they were going to give me a dagger to kill the imposter, or to, or to dispel something that was on him. Yours was this one? Yep. The first, second, third, fourth one. Oh, yeah, that one. This one mine. says... Oh, oh, that one's not mine. This one says... This one's yours. That one's mine. Yeah. But also said the imposter thing and the dagger. These two say they're from the same person, but they have different fonts on it. Okay, make a check. Yeah. Kind of... I don't know what you're, you're going to have to check, but... Was there a dagger in my room? Nope. So, um, these two are from, this one claims it's from the mayor. <laughs> this one, you know, maybe a mayor would have, he probably this have one like, says they're trying to kill the mayor, that one says the mayor's He probably have like poisoned. doctor's handwriting, you know? This one says the mayor's an imposter. This one also says the mayor's an imposter. It says it's from the same person, but the, the script is different on them. Mm-hmm. I bet this is one of those party trick things I've heard about. I bet they do this every year. Hmm. So uh, let's kill the mayor guy. Let's, let's capture him. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> well, you'll, you'll go to prison for that if they don't execute you. Well, he is brold the brash. I mean, well, <laughs> I live life to the fullest. That's right. Well, <laughs> that's right here. So as you guys descend into this massive room at the basement level, you see just a carnival of activity. So first thing is you hear music. There's like a, a band playing like music. You see um, a ring where people are actually fighting, like pugilism. Like they're in their costumes, but they're like fighting and stuff and people are cheering. There's another area that's kind of even dug into the basement area with like a stone ring around it and you hear the sound of like weapon on weapon and shields. Like ching, 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 ching. And people are cheering over there. It looks almost like a small gladiator pit of some kind. Fighting pit. Um, you see an area where there's an archery range that's been set up and there's like people like, you know, shooting. It's a contest bows. of skills. Yeah, there's, there's all these different things happening. Um, and by the way, the stage where the music is being played, like this group of bards is incredible. It's like a small, like five piece band and they're playing this amazing music. And there's actually like flashing colored lights around the stage. And somehow the music seems to be like artificially amplified as if by some tricky cantrip. Like the singer, you can actually hear the singer singing along with the music. Um, and there's more drinking and more food. Um, also, by the way, probably half of the people that you see are watching and the other half are participating in these different contests. So there are a lot of just like watchers who are like drinking and like cheering people on and watching. And then there are people like getting in line to go do these different activities. Are there any magical skill tests? It's funny because you're looking around and you see there's magic being used by people, like cantrips and stuff being used to enhance the stage performance, but you don't really see anything. But you do see the two suited uh, maitre d's with the white gloves are standing by um, on the far side of this huge room. They're standing by a set of double doors, which are open. But you don't see anybody going into that line yet. Can there's I no see line. what's in, what's past these it's, double doors? What's in the room? Dark. Mm. Can you detect magic? No. No? 
Alright. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. walk up. Can you tell me look in the room? Are They're like, are you would you like to go into the labyrinth, sire? It's my What's in the labyrinth? The <laughs> iteration of the spell, but I could just the only it is for you to find out, thing. sire. Yeah, you I, know, I mean, I'll, I would have to rest. Go level, but you go in. You have rest one. Us before you go in. Thank you. I will go when I'm ready. ready. Turn around. Do we suspect the magical for some reason? Yeah, like I said, you notice all well, these other people doing all these other things. No, is anybody going Nobody's down Nobody's in line for the labyrinth. They're just sitting there by themselves, like, with the doors open, waiting. Uh, well, I guess, can I find our little old hobbit lady? Yeah, she's she's like watching one of the boxing matches, and she's like, "Yes, get him!" <laughs> I um, say, "Hey, hey, madam lady." Yes. What's in the labyrinth? Oh, well, uh, more than likely the treasure, the treasure of the masquerade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you were the treasure of this masquerade. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> honor me so much, oh. young man, you. You are so kind to an old woman. Yes. Armor. Armor on her. Yeah. Yes, I am I am going to sit here and watch these young young men and women beat themselves to a pulp. It's good entertainment. But if you seek more bloodthirstiness, the pit over there, they use real weapons over there. People almost die. But the mayor keeps a few healers on hand to prevent too much too much death. But uh, occasionally, some do. What was the uh, halfling's name? That was Madam's. Madam Siana. Yeah, Siana. All right. Is, is this name Milania? Milania mean anything to anybody? Not that you've met tonight. Mm. It's on all of them, too? No, it's yeah, just on it's two. two. Just ours. Signed by the ours. same person, almost in the same, they say the same things, but they're different. Different handwriting. Different handwriting. Yeah. Hmm. I'll scan the crowd for anybody walking with the characteristics of the mayor. Okay. You don't even need to make a roll. Okay. You see the mayor and his wife. It's obvious that they are wearing masks and they have not changed into a costume. They're still wearing their finery that mm -hmm. they've been wearing all night. That's what I was waiting the mayor's for. Mask, the mayor's mask, the mayor's mask is basically like, you hey, I'm the, the mayor. Like, like it's like two strips of leather around his eyes. I tried. His wife's so hair and jewelry and clothes are recognizable. She has one of those yeah, like it's New Orleans been, like Mardi Gras masks where like covered on the top and it's got some like nerdy feathers. But and now see it's again. true. Clear as day who the mayor and his wife are. Yeah. It's also clear that the half orc who has been following them the entire time does not play this game. <laughs> He's the only one not wearing a costume or a mask. Then you notice that he has like a scarf on around his neck that he didn't have on before. Okay. Hmm. He's participating. Mm -hmm. Scarf of protection. I might be <laughs> pertinent to pop it, take magic, and then we can see if any of these letters are magic too. Uh, it only works on uh, one person or object, I think. No, it's, uh, uh, it's a field. It's 30 foot. Yeah, you're it's right. 30, 30 foot radius. Right right Let's get close to him then and. All right. Well, so well, he over. can pop it, and then because it lasts like ten minutes. And, and you, you notice at this point, around. like the mayor and his wife are like stopping at different groups of people and chatting and talking and stuff, and then they they laugh and nod, and then they go over to another group. So it seems like they're kind of making the rounds. Well, they're otherwise engaged. I'll get within thirty feet. Okay. And then I'll furtively get a detect magic up and running. Okay. And. Uh, Sweep the half work, the mayor. Now, do you all know which letters you got? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now, reclaim your letters. Make okay. sure that you get the right ones. You got the mayor? I the mayor. Two, who had the Thank mayor? The mayor. That yeah. one, two. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, what are you casting, Mark? Detect magic. On the mayor again? Yes, oh, but before we leave the group, I'm gonna sweep gonna these look. letters too. Because oh, okay. it's 30 foot radius. Okay, 30 foot. The letters do not contain any any magic. 
then we'll get the half work, and then we'll get the mayor. The half work definitely has magic on him. Uh, his his, his scarf area. His no, the scarf seems to be mundane, but his sword, his long sword at his side, and his breastplate seem to both be magic. Okay. Uh, the mayor does not seem to have any magic, nor does his wife. Okay. Can I try to stealth over towards the mayor sure. and uh, his wife to overhear what they're saying as they're kind of conversing with people? But since I still have one more nat one to go, <laughs> I just completely fall over myself um, as I'm like right next to them. And you know what? Let's see if that draws the attention <laughs> of anyone. Nope. No. <laughs> Nobody seems to notice. It is, I mean, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of people talking. There's people cheering, people fighting. There's a band playing. So you got some cover in terms of the noise. Let me see your sheet and then make a perception yes. check. Is, where is this? Two net 20s? Yeah, That's two net 20s and two net more net 20s. Net 20s. <laughs> one, uh, 21. A net 20 <laughs> plus yeah. one yes. means... The question of the day. So I'm out of failed dice, right? Yes. Did I get any more bonuses or no? No. No. Yeah. All right. No. So um, one of the people serving drinks like bumps up against you and awkwardly um, like puts something in your pocket, which you totally notice. It's a small vial and there's a milky yeah, white your, substance in it. Your letters say almost exactly the um, same thing. The, the server seems to, seems to like keep going as if they didn't notice that you noticed. Okay. There have been four courses. Hmm. Can I make a... Travis, even though you burned your note, mm -hmm. your note. Okay. That's the same. Is it? It was. Okay. Um, can I make a arcana check on the vial? You may. Okay. That's Mary. another not one. Wow. Nice. <laughs> um, it's 23. <laughs> you don't work in poisons. You don't have proficiency with a poisoning kit, do you? Mm, no. Okay. You're not sure if this is what it says it is. Okay. It's not magical, though. That part you're sure about. Okay. Via your your knowledge of Arcana, it's not magical. Okay. But you're not sure that it is what it says it is. Okay. You are socializing, and somebody bumps into you too. Mm -hmm. Do you still have fails, or do um, you use them all? Fails or fails are done. Now I have two net twenties, and then two net ones after that. Okay. Yep. You clearly see somebody trying to slip something into your pocket. Mm -hmm. It is also a vial. Okay. And if I take it out and just take a quick look, uh huh. Is it green? Uh huh. It is. Can I uh, turn and just the teeniest nip, just to to taste it and see? If it tastes like anything that I might know, because I, I have, I'm uh, herbalism, proficient in herbalism. I'm going to go ahead so. and you make that roll. You want to use that natch on there? Yeah, I think I'll do that 20 on that one. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to make a con save, but you're certain that that is poison. All right, good to know. Compare it. <laughs> hey, the wolf. Yep. Do you have any penalties against you? Did anybody buff you up yet? No, not yet. Good. Make a regular perception roll. Oh, boy. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> fate will decide. I got a... 11. Great. Pass me your letter. Uh oh tear it up. You... Nothing happens with you. Who are you hanging out with? Um, I'm going to keep an eye on the mayor and see if there's anybody that's particularly interested in the mayor. Mm. Can you read a letter for a second? Okay. Around 
found uh, glass number two of the wine. Vezra's like, I'm going to go give my greetings to the mayor and his wife. Would you like to join me? I have time. Vezra's no, you're, you're oh, Vezra. I'm yeah, sorry. you're with you're with. Uh, yes. Your oh, friend. she found me. All right. Cool. So you walk over there. Um, I'm sorry, what, what did she say? She says, I'm going to give my greetings to the mayor okay. and his wife. Would you yes, like to join I'll, me? I will join you. So you make your way through. You um, wait until they're like done talking. And as, as they finish talking with someone, she, you see she walks up and she's like, another successful banquet. And she takes his hand and clasps it. And he shakes her hand. And you notice, uh, make an insight check. Uh, my next roll is a nat 20. It is? Yeah! This game's <laughs> killing me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do? We should have like a system. This will be next time, people. You have a system where you secretly tell people yeah. what they got. Because you can kind of meta your way out of those things. But I just, I totally forgot about that. So here's what happens. <laughs> You succeed with your nat 20 on that insight She has a poison ring. You see some funky happen. When she clasped his hands, you notice he kind of pulled back for a second, and and um, and then she like let go of his hands, and then she goes to give a kiss on each cheek to the, the wife of the mayor. I will grab the hand that... Grab her grab hand? Her, yeah. Okay. And I will put uh, my right foot behind her and take her down. Ooh. <laughs> you get that surprise action. Go ahead. She's not expecting that. <laughs> oh. You both go down. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I rolled a three. That's a clown show ready to happen. So you're like, Whoa! you guys both tank. Like, you just eat floor. And she's like, ah, and like falls down. You you fall down, she falls down. She kind of catches herself. And she's like, what? Watch yourself, you. Now, at this point, are you trying to play that off? Yeah. Okay. Make a deception check. <laughs> this is why it's really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. 15 plus, oh, a deception. Oh, 14. <laughs> she, she seems, she's like, ah. Don't be such an oaf. You nearly knocked me over. She gets back up, and, and, and the mayor's wife is like, are you okay, Vezra? And she's like, yes, I'm fine. Uh, someone has clearly had too much to drink at the banquet. <laughs> That's funny, because he could dance before. So um, she's like, your, your apologies, uh, but I, I am glad that you've had such an excellent banquet, Mayor. This is, once again, one of your finest, if not the finest, and he's like, well, thank you, Vezra. It is an honor to have you. What's and going on with Without family? your family, you um, don't see anything. Like, you don't see any blood or puncture, puncture marks or anything like that. Um, he seems to be okay. Did she have the writing on her hand? Does it look like it's faded or anything? Make a perception check. <sighs> Three. <laughs> so she's, she has, like, she is, kind of keeping her gestures to a minimum, but you you see like on the, you know, the arm and the outside of the hand, everything looks like it's all there. So she congratulates him, he, he nods and thanks her, and then and then she she bows and then she kind of walks off without you. I'll sidle up to her and say, you know, we could get started on looking at these lines. Are you so sure that you're ready? Well, for now, well, you seem to be adventurous enough. Come with me. Okay. You see she walks over to a corner where there's like, um, kind of like silk draperies just hanging. And she pushes past the silk dra draperies and she walks over to um, like on the wall are actually hung like a series of um, tapestries. We're she at uh, 12, 15, by the way. Excellent. Yeah. She pulls back one of the tapestries and there's a door. She opens the door and when the door opens, you hear moaning sounds from lots of people. And then suddenly it occurs to you that like, 
seemed like the amount of people in this room wasn't quite right. And you look in this room and there's dimly lit, just like candles. There's probably like 20 naked people just in a pile. <laughs> and you've just walked into an orgy. And she like turns back at you like it's nothing and just drops her costume off like bing, bing, buttons, boom. And she takes your hand and she's like, well, are you ready? I don't think I'm ready to share that much. <laughs> Suit yourself. And she walks in and kind of like lays down amongst the pile. Fade to black. Fade up from black. What are you guys doing? Um, I'd like to go over, uh, over here because I know that she got the same note that I did. Yeah. And so I'll show her my little green potion and tell her, yeah, this is definitely poison. What's yours? It's different. Um, I, I don't, it's not magical. Here, let me try it. And I just take a little sip again. Mmm. Yeah. Natural Got any 20. special things there? Natural 20. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is also <laughs> poison. It's okay. a different kind of poison. You don't have to make a con save, mm. but it's definitely more poison. Alex, let me see your letter. Ah. Yes. Stop. Standing with these two. <laughs> by the way, our uh, fantastic game master screen brought to you by Talon and Claw as well. Yay! So, <laughs> that's um, great. <laughs> Alex, do you have any deficiencies imposed by our audience? No, I no. get an advantage next time. I'd like you. You can make a perception check. Roll two twenty sides. Take the higher one for advantage, or save it for another thing. Your call. I'll do one. Six. Can I use it up? If you use your advantage, you really can't take the better one. I think I probably should do that. All right. Don't fail me now. 11 plus, uh, what do I got? Three proficiencies plus three. Nothing for perception. Mmm. That's just enough. 14. To not notice anything. All right, Mark, <laughs> let me see your letter. Rats. Yeah, uh, well, the three of us are still together, and yes. I'm going to also uh, say, you know, it's weird. My letter has most of what this one has in it, yeah. except it doesn't have a first, second, third, and fourth. It does, however, say fifth online for some reason. That is odd. <laughs> Tabby's doing it Sorry, before. I, I failed my throw roll. <laughs> Did you fail your copy paste also and leave the fifth in here? Because there's not. Everything you read in those letters is intentional. There are subtle differences on purpose. Now there have been four courses, and supposedly there's a fifth. Make a perceptual mark. <laughs> I think I still have a nat one coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, in that case, you, yeah. As you're talking about this riddle, this very strange thing. I wonder if don't anyone else will pick up on what I'm saying and try to well, I'm standing use right their insight. Do I get a chance to Yeah, sing? you know that cute elf girl that you were dancing before with? Yeah. You see, you, you recognize her. Mm-hmm. Make a perception. And <laughs> I'm gonna use the snitch. Oh, very close. close. But still, I got a pretty good, so that's a, like a 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. You kind of spot her. Mm -hmm. She walks, she's like walking through the crowd towards um, one of the areas, and you notice that she's kind of headed towards a, a corner, mm -hmm. and she passes by them. You notice she passes, almost like brushes really close by them, but she keeps walking. I'm going to grab her hand, attempt to grab her hand to see. Okay. You don't need to roll. You yeah. grab her hand. She, she turns and she's like, huh? And she like looks through and she sees, oh, she's like the wolf. Yeah. Are you going to the labyrinth too? I think we will be. Me and my friend you here. Should. I've heard that the treasure this year is extravagant. We'll see you there. Yeah. First one to the treasure, she runs off. You guys notice that there are a few people starting to head over into that corner where the double doors are and the two mater D's are waiting. So did we see him stop this elf? Yes. As he, she was you sure did. rushing on us. And you saw him talk to her? Double check. 
Why was she so close to us? You're like, hey, what's this new thing that I have? Is it just, a dagger? It sure is. Just oh, shimmied boy. right into my belt. A dagger with a... Me and him. Both Me. of you. Both of us. You're like, hey, what? Mm. Huh? Where did this mm. come from? So... A dagger with an amethyst stone? Yours sure has an amethyst stone in it. Is it a real amethyst stone? Says the jewel. How, how long it has been been since he cast to detect magic? No rule necessary. It is a real amethyst. Okay. It's been too long since I cast that. Because I think it's ten minutes. Yeah, I haven't been concentrating mm-hmm. though. Do we do we want to go try and test this out on the mayor right now? Well, well, where are you <laughs> but they both have that one to stab a guy. I know. Do you guys yeah. let the wolf know? Sure. Yeah. Hey, look. Look what she put in my <laughs> belt. John, it occurs to you that maybe you should check your own self. Yeah. And mean, then upon doing myself. so, you find something, much like what was described in your letter. Do you hold it up for everybody to see? Yeah, I'm like, just describe is it. Is it the antidote? An- an- yeah, it's another vial. What color is it? Uh, does it say in my letter? Mine's blue. Green, green, blue. No, white, no, white, 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 blue. white green, green, blue. blue. Yep. Poison, poison. Okay. I'll, I'll walk over as I see him pull that out, and I'll be like, here, let me try it. And then I'll take another sip. Nat one. <laughs> oh, no. Make a con save. <laughs> I have two nat ones in a row. Uh-oh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ruh, ruh, Reggie. It's going down, down. Yeah. <laughs> you don't feel good. Like, really don't feel good. Well, just from that medicine. Is so now I, know it is. Uh, now I have to roll yeah, using well, these is, four is official D&D D6s D6 oh, yeah. and these two <laughs> crafting muse D6s because it's 66 worth of pain and suffering. <laughs> Ouch. 10, 13, 18, 21, 23. Ouch. 23. All right. Yeah, I I don't quite um I, I don't quite make it to the edge of the room as I just start like vomiting crazy. Yep. Yeah. You see your little barbarian halfling friend not doing too well. Should have slowed down on the booze there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was those those vials. The other ones were gross too, but this one was so. <clears throat> Where are you? You're coming back from the orgy room. <laughs> Where are you? I'm right next to him. Okay. I'm, I have. So you guys are all kind of within the same <laughs> range of each other. You hear a ear piercing cry come from across the room, <sighs> like the loudest scream ever. The music stops. People, people stop to turn. Even the fighting in the two different gladiator pits stop. And you see from across the room, the mayor's wife holding the mayor like as he's collapsing. And she's like, come to his aid, heal us, he is sick. And there's blood coming out of his mouth and his nose and his ears. Did you get any good cleric magic? <laughs> kind of. I'm going to give you a portion of that. What? Did, he, did you get any <laughs> vials or anything? <laughs> Check yourself. We all... Do I have anything? We all got something What's planted up on us. Uh, death is inevitable. Can't tell what he knows of the plan. Believes the conspirators trying to forge an alliance with the Pashas of Kalimshan. And the Pashas of Kalimshan are the elves, right? Mm. Um, the the nice lady that you've been yeah courting all night long. She's from mm. Calvin. And he sees everywhere he goes. People are watching him. It's only a matter of time before they make their move. Find some of my trusted allies and shed light on the conspiracy before it's too late. So, does that uh, do you share that the those people are the elves? Well, yeah. Okay, I'm like, well, the maiden oh, that put the that. dagger into these two belt. Yeah. A great also commotion is, is breaking out. People are, like, freaking out. Murmur, murmur, talk, gossip, shrieks. People are, like, crowding over there. You see a couple um, attendants carrying holy symbols run from the gladiator pit over to where the mayor has collapsed and his wife. You notice that the half-orc who's been with them the whole time is like, Everyone back, stay back, give him room. Healers, come quickly. 
grab him and bring him along. I'm going to run over by the mayor as well. Okay. All right. You you kind of push your way through the crowd. People are like, wow, oh, what's going on? Is he going to be okay? About? And they're like, you see kind of people part the way for you. And the other two healers that were by the pits, they run up there and, and, and she's like, help him, help him. And she's like, just at her wit's end. And the mayor's completely collapsed on the ground now. Blood's coming out of his mouth, his nose, his ears. And he seems his eyes are glazed over and he's like, like struggling to just breathe. Seems like he's been poisoned. It would seem that way. Okay, Your Honor, you're gonna feel a slight prick. I'm gonna take the dagger and yeah. <laughs> just kind of nick him just a little bit with this dagger and see if that dispels any uh, magical aura or whatever that would disguise who he is. Make a deception check, because you're trying to do it, like, discreetly. <laughs> that, that one. <laughs> you stab. You're like, I will assess the poison. And he's like, ow! Uh, ah. And you, you kind of, you don't do damage, but you poke him. And they're like, like, the two healers are like, what are you doing, fool? And they're, they're like, they're getting out ointments and stuff. And they're like, and they start, like, casting spells. And He looks the same. You notice that the, like... The briefly, he seems to like revive a little bit, as if somehow they're they're like somehow healing him, and yet almost immediately after the brief revival, he he flushes again and he coughs and like <clears throat> like blood comes out and he's struggling and they're like it's and you you hear like one of the priests like it's not working. He's like try another spell. And they're like I'm brash. Yeah, I'm gonna grab his hand, cut it with my dagger. <laughs> Again, like, people are like, what is he doing? And, the, and like, the half-orc is like, fool, step back. And he draws his sword. As, step away from the mayor. As soon as he does that, I polymorph into oh, a I'm giant sorry. bear. Yeah. Before you polymorph into a bear, though. Oh, no. Uh -oh. I die. I, this is gonna I don't know if you <laughs> took it, but I did give him a portion of health. Yeah. I did, I did have, do have a healing potion. Okay, so that's good because you're gonna take 27 more damage. So the, the DM gets two natural ones in the guy and uh, Alex, you get advantage. Ooh. Advantage again, all right. Ooh, down to the wire. He said 27? Yeah. Okay, I start to polymorph into a bear. Yeah. And immediately just like vomit my guts out and then just like pass out right next to everybody. This draws the attention of everybody, but all of you should still make a perception check. Except, <laughs> except, except me. <laughs> so, proficiency, so that's perception is now. 20, not natural. Oh yeah, perception okay. plus four. 14. So it's 17. Been doing about as good as I've been doing. Everybody's <laughs> got a check tonight. <laughs> okay. Only the people who got over a 20. You notice in that corner where the double doors were leading to the labyrinth, you notice Vezra run through those double doors into the labyrinth. During this, like, it's like everybody's attention is focused on the mayor, focused on this now horribly dying halfling. One of the healers reaches out to you and heals you for six hit points. All right. Did I get my but slice you in? guys, okay. yes, you got your slice Didn't in. Didn't do anything. Nope. The half-orc seems to be, like, like concerned about, like, other people. He's like, everyone out. move I'm back good. except for the healers. I want to try and find the elf I was with before. You saw her go into the lab, like, like mm -hmm. two minutes ago. I'm going to go into whatever. Oh, okay. yeah. I'd yeah. say we got to draw my... Grab everybody. And I'm saying... Or she might have an antidote for, an antidote for this. Yeah. Yep. Those elves from Callum Shander behind this. Princess they just ran into the labyrinth. After them! Yes. I am, uh, yeah, I'm going in. I have fast movement. Full spring. So I get to move at uh, 50 feet. Anybody else moving at that level of speed? I am a rogue, so I can... Yeah, cunning action. Cunning action. So, so you guys... I can move 90 feet a turn. You guys book, okay? The rest of you start going that way? Yep. yep. No, I'm going to try a lesser restoration on the mayor. Okay, good man. Let me know how that goes. 
Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going to, since I got the. I got healed. What's the casting time on that? It's one action. Okay. And for all of those of us who maybe don't remember the difference between different spells and different editions because it's been a long time, in fifth edition, what does that do, Mark? Ah, you touch a creature and it can end either one disease or one condition afflicting it. The condition can be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. <laughs> Did anybody penalize him with an auto fail? <laughs> I've used up my two auto fails. Oh. Naturally, too. <laughs> Not like one of those right. on purpose type things. You call upon your god, the god of meat and beef. Mm. <laughs> and the sacred, the sacred blood of the cow flows through your hands. You restore the mayor. The mayor, the blood stops coming from his nose, his ears, his mouth. The healer, immediately after you do that, does another healing spell. The, the mayor seems to take a deep breath, and he's like, oh, oh, oh. And he looks up at you, and he, he reaches up, and he's like, my friend, thank you. Beef be with you. <laughs> the half orc is like in awe and like looking around. Meanwhile, you guys hauled into the labyrinth. Yeah, I'm yeah. um, trying to track down the elf girl. Okay. Yeah. You go and the labyrinth goes down about 20 feet and then it splits off and you notice that each wall of the labyrinth is a mirror. This is not only a labyrinth, but it's a mirror maze. Smash everyone I walk past. <laughs> you're, you're I, just, I, I'm looking sh yep. for okay. Sh tracks. Okay, Ish. you can make a, an attempt of survival. I'm going to say that you have disadvantage because this is a very confusing room with little light and a lot of mirrors. Alex, you start smashing mirrors as you go. Smash, yep. smash, yep. smash. I got a great sword in one hand and a hand axe in the other. Okay, but nonstop. You guys hear the 13. smashing as you're following. 13 is not good enough. You hear, and, and as, as the brash one is just breaking through glass, you hear people up ahead going like, what's that sound? What's going on? Oh. And there's like, like more <laughs> panic, right? And you get to a point where it splits off. And you guys are there, you've smashed all the glass out of your way. And in smashing one of the, the walls, you've actually opened up open space in the room. Like you could see now the inside of the maze, like the back end, and you see that you could like kind of cut through the maze towards the end. Keep smashing. You you yeah. run through the broken glass part and you, you run to where you see the end of the maze. Okay. And you you have but to smash through it. Smash away. Okay. You smash through this last mirror and you see that it opens up to a small chamber and there's stairs going down. Go These down. stairs yeah. do not look like the ornate, like well-made stairs. These are like rough hewn stone stairs that go down Ancient and stairs. it's a tunnel that goes down. And you guys get to the bottom and as you're getting to the bottom, you hear two voices saying like, hurry, we must get out of here quickly. It's a woman's voice. You guys get to the bottom. You guys are still following? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys get to the bottom first, and you see the elf maiden that you'd been dancing with, and you see Vezra. And they're, they're actually getting onto a boat. There's an underground river. They're getting into a boat. And you see a larger, taller man, the high elf with the white hair, who's, like, undoing the rope. And they look up, and they see you. Yeah. You guys see I had a great ax, or a hand axe, great sword. Hand axe is flying. Roll initiative. <laughs> what are your, 20? Yep. Oh, add in your, 20. Add in your dex Five. bonus. With the uh, two, seven. 19. Can you be my, be my initiative keeper? Mm -hmm. Yay. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna call off um, roll. Everybody over a 20. Who's got over a 20? Okay. Uh, uh, 24. Okay. John at 24. 23, 22, 21, 20. 19. 18? I got 19. Okay. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 8, 8 6. 6. Okay. Alex at 7. 6. 6. Trav? 1. I don't know where Mark was at with initiative. <laughs> I can't. We'll Plus throw him in. Hit. Yeah. Okay, the bad guys are at 11. Oh, oh, 
All right, who's up first? The yeah. wolf. Yeah. And you're actually there with him because you can yeah. move quickly. So how far away are they from me? You're 15 feet away. There's like the end feet? of the stairs, there's a landing. And they're on and the then boat? And then there's a little underground river, and they're on the boat. So I want to attempt to run, jump onto the boat, and uh, grapple the elf man. Excellent. You can move there. Make your grapple attack. Go ahead. And I got a net 20 for my next check. Oh, <laughs> how and, convenient. <laughs> and I am expertise in athletics, so it turns to like a total of a 27. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, he does not make his ability to resist. You have him grappled. You, you just like spring like a cat. You run out, kind of do a jump and grab, and you, you got him in like the bear hug, and yeah. he's like at an awkward angle, so you tackle grapple him into the boat. So you guys are on the floor of the boat, but he is pinned. You got him pinned. All right, who is next in initiative? I was. You're at the top of the stairs. You can hear this hubbubbery going down down there, and you smell like water that's kind of old. Okay, with my 30 feet of movement, can I make it down to the bottom of the stairs? Yes. Can I see what's going on? Yes. I'm gonna use a scorching ray and hit the elf Maiden once, hit Vezra once, and then hit whoever he tackled once. That might be hard because you might hit him, but go ahead with the first two attacks. Okay, I'll go with the first two and then. So that's a. Oh, what am I? That's. Uh, 16 and 20. Hit, hit. Okay, and then I'll just hit uh, Vezra the second time. Okay. So I'll try and hit him. That's an 8, so that's not going to hit. Okay. Um, so the the first two hits, one on the maiden, one on Vezra. Yes. Okay. And I can find it. I want to make sure I don't do more damage than I need to. <laughs> okay. So seven damage on the maiden. Okay. And ten damage on Vezra. Okay. <laughs> out of out of the dim lighting comes two bolts that fly past and ping both of the, the ladies as they're standing on the boat, throwing them slightly off guard. Who's next in initiative? Um, uh, bad guys. Okay. Vezra spins and blasts out light, blew a bolt of blue eldritch energy from her hands, shooting back at you. One misses, one hits, 23? Yes. Yeah. My AC is 15. Okay. You're going to take 12. Okay. The maiden takes the pole and pushes off. So the boat starts moving into the river slowly, but it's in the river and she's pushing off and, and launching it. Okay, who's next? Uh, Alex, you're me. up. Hand great, goes great, flying. Sword, great swords in. Two handed weapon, I'd imagine. Yes. Yep. All right, so hand, I'm, I'm running in. I got 50, you know, I got fast movement. So I'm going to attempt to throw an axe and jump on the boat with a second attack. Yes. And attack with the I could do axe. raging, which lets me get some extra attack, yeah. right? Is mm -hmm. that how I get to, how I would get to attacks here? Yeah. Okay, so rage will give you the the all the other bonuses to each your to, so to you're gonna melee. activate rage, you're gonna throw the axe and then jump on the boat with the the yep. rage. Yep. Okay. So you rage with the axe. So the axe is at seventeen. That's huge. Hit. <laughs> okay. And you're hit. hitting the maiden with that or Vezra? I'm gonna go with Vezra. Okay. Uh, so it does one d six plus yes. five because yes. I'm raging. Yes. So. We're at seven. Okay. And then the great sword here, raging plus five. You get a net 20 on that. You've got your next two rolls are net 20. 20. <laughs> All right. We're going to do some big damage. Right? All right. So, so the way that I do um, crits is uh, using the Bill Allen damage alternative scoring system. So instead of you take two dice, right? Okay. Like in the old days, you'd be like, oh, here's my you max out the first. So what's your great axe do? Or great so sword, what is it's, it? It's uh, 2d6 plus five, because okay. I'm raging. So the 2d6, normally you'd so roll one, four d6. A six. So you're gonna roll two more d6 and add that to 12. So you're maxing okay. out the first two d6, and then so you're rolling 12, two. 12, 
plus six. 18, oh 20, <laughs> plus five. So 22 Eight. plus... T- 29. 22 plus five is 27. Did you, does that include rage though, Larry? Oh, maybe. Is rage bonus? Uh, no, I get plus two to the roll. So it'd be 20. 29. Yeah, Larry was right. 29. So 20, 29. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're flying down. And that was Vesra? Yeah. So you axed her and then you. Yeah. Ran up through the axe, flying through the sky. Oh my god. Wow. She's wow. dead. Sliced her down. She's, she's, <laughs> she's gone. You split her. Like you, you oh, hard shit. half of her body off, and she just drops. Excellent into the boat. <laughs> kind of like a piece of meat, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of which, it's your turn. Slice. So here's the things that just went down. It was all chaos happens, right? Like he jumps and grapples the high elf, the man, gets him in a pin. You hear all this hubbubery as you're going down there. She runs down there, you hear like shoo, 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 spells back and forth. Mm-hmm. Then you hear oh, and an axe, and then oh, and you just hear bodies and meat. Yeah, I went rage mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I come chugging up from uh, behind. Yeah, you run down the stairs, you can make it down the stairs with your movement and still attack. The boat okay. is leaving the, the yeah. edge, but... <laughs> How sturdy a boat is it? It's like a little long boat built for river cruise kind of vibe. So it can handle about six people in it. It's right now two there's uh, jumped into it. Yeah. Four. There's some splashes yeah. in the water. Right now there's three people alive and one body. The kind of boat that'd be susceptible to punching a hole in it with a war hammer? Sure. All right. Yeah, that would sink it. <laughs> Let's chuck that war hammer. All right, you're gonna try to pierce the hull. So you need to okay. do a fair amount of damage. Okay. In this hit, you, you need to do over 10 damage to, to crack that hull. It'll be tough. Um, hmm. Over 10 damage? I better throw the hand axe too then. 15 plus seven. That'll hit it. Five, yeah. So that's just the hammer. Yep. It's 1d8 plus 2. Okay. 7, 8, 9. Pretty close. Use the first, that the hammer smacks it and cracks the wood. Splinters go flying everywhere. And then you follow up trying to nail the same spot to break it open with the axe. Yeah. All right. Not even close. The axe goes <laughs> ding, ding, and goes in the water. All right, who's up next? Yes. You're up. So I come huffing up. How the heck did that dwarf get in front of me? Don't charge down there. (laughs) I guess the elf maiden's the last one standing. She is, and she's holding like the 10 foot pole to push the boat off uh, to get it launched into the river. She's pushed that. I'll slice her up. Okay. Uh, Let me see. So to hit is 17. Yep. And it is a D8, D8 plus three, nine points of damage. She's still standing, but With she's a very hurt. large, fine slice in her. Yes. <laughs> You're up. Yep. All right. So I am going to once again morph into a bear. Okay. And uh, <laughs> run down the stairs. And go straight for the boat. I knew this was. And I'm just going to leap and roar yeah. as loud as I can. Okay. And just jump on the boat. Just make an athletics check. You get advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I know where this is going. Well, natural one and a ten. Oh. So, well, let's see. Is that athletics? Uh, that should be sixteen. Yep. Yeah, sixteen. That's enough. It's not that far off of the of the launch. So. You jump in the boat, mm-hmm. and everybody on the boat is going to make a deck save because the boat's capsizing. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, <laughs> that's interesting. Ooh, that, that's not good. John the Wolf, tell me, I'll do go. you do you make your deck save? Because no, you, I got I got one. Okay. <laughs> you uh, here's what happens. You unfortunately during this capsizing, you Uh are flipping and you're going underwater along with the poor maiden who is wounded. She (laughs) drops the the 10-foot pole and 
What happens to the guy in my grip, even though I'm he, going in That's what I'm about to describe. <laughs> you guys flip, okay? The whole boat, big splash, right? Did you make your deck save? Mm, You're going in the water, too. But I have an advantage. <laughs> oh. I made it. Well done. 18. So I'm going to give you a choice. All right. You can either jump off into the water or jump back onto land. I am going to choose to... But the boat's flipping either way. I'm going to try to grab that big amethyst as I jump back on the land. I'll let you tell. You know what? Go ahead. Make that roll. <laughs> Seven. Try not. You know, it's not like she's resisting because she's dead, but... Yeah, I just, I just, <laughs> but I just you, landed next to her and chopped her in half. I thought maybe I'd reach down yeah. and grab that amulet. You, 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 reach, you reach down and the boat's flipping and you, you jump uh, back onto the land. Just, just just before missing. it flips. All right. This is worth a shot. Just before it flips. The maiden so the failed her deck right save. Here. She's splashing in the water. You failed your deck save. Yeah. You and the, the male elf are rolling under the boat. So now the boat's flipped over. You're a big, happy, dumb bear floating yep. on, a, <laughs> on a boat. And you're, there's water, and it's, it's kind of gross and dank water, but you know, you're... Oof. Yeah. The boat's like, so there's like a splash back on the land. <laughs> you make a swim check. Swim check? Yeah. 18 plus 7, so okay. 25. You find yourself swimming back to the surface. You're swim holding on to the Nope. You're holding on to the edge of the boat. There's a big happy bear there who you don't remember from before, but he doesn't seem to be attacking you. Mm -hmm. The maiden is like gasping for air and she's like grasping for the boat and she's been wounded heavily. So she's like trying to grab the boat. Top of the order. Me? Yeah. What do uh, you do? Can I see where the elf dude went? You could try. Do you have dark vision? No, I'm human. Okay. It's pretty you dark. I can see the maiden, right? Yeah, she's grasping for the, the boat. She's like, All right, no, I'm going to swim. Gonna, Paul, grab her yeah. and swim with her. Try and grab her and move to shore. Okay, it's not a far swim. You can make it in one round. You grab the ledge, the rock ledge. Yeah, but I want to grab her too. And you got her. Yeah. She's not resisting your grapple because she's very wounded. She's like, save me. <laughs> okay, that's me. Yep. I have dark vision. Can I see the, the guy? Up? How close to the water do you get? I'm like on the edge. I'm not going to get right up next to it, but Make I can see it. Make a perception check. Okay, that's a nine. You see dark, murky, dirty water. Okay. You do not see him. That's fine. Away from them, yeah. I am going to use my uh, cold breath weapon yes. to try and freeze the top of the water. Oh, I like that. You may do so. Okay. So I don't really have to. So you don't really a, have to roll to hit. Cone. So you just you just freeze up the area downstream or upstream. Where where are you kind of freezing up? Like adjacent to? Kind of. Just down where, as much as possible. Where the boat kind of so like last where I last saw the guy. Okay. So trying to freeze. You him. make a water popsicle. You just yep. and, okay. You just make a thing. Going down in there. But it's a 15 foot cone. It's a 15 foot cone. Okay. You see this just massive chunk of ice. The water's already starting to melt it, but it goes down deep. Okay. Okay, who's next? I'm not sure where bad you have guys. me. You roll. I have you after the bad guys. All right, Maiden does not resist. You pull her to the shore, she's like, and she's like caught up and bleeding from where everybody beat up everybody up. She does nothing for her round other than like breathe. <laughs> Who's after that? Mark? Yeah. Which way was the boat pointing? It was pointing down river. They were gonna go down this underground river. How much shoreline is there toward the river? There's a, uh, like a 10 foot lip. Oh, about 10 feet before it goes into the cave. I'll move as far as I can along that and Look out into the. You have dark vision. Make a perception check. We are at uh, 1250. Yeah. We'll almost be done. We're gonna just bleed over. 19. Fun time. Yeah. Natural, 19. Natural 19. Man, do I have any 
DM powers where I could just cancel Marco <laughs> from from anybody? No. no. All right. No love for the DM. You see a figure swimming underwater about 20 feet down, going towards the dark cave. Well, there's a 120 foot range on my guiding bolt. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll pop that off. I have to make a range. Range tap, goes. Tap. Okay, I'm not going to give you disadvantage. Roll to 10, I think plus 5, because that's what my hand axe gets when it's ranged, I guess. Well, it'd be your, right? it's your cast, your casting spell attack, so it's your casting, your wisdom bonus. Wisdom yeah. bonus plus, plus your proficiency, proficiency bonus. Yeah. So that's so plus 7, so I'm 17. <laughs> okay, roll the damage. <laughs> okay. That is 46. Does he get a resist, a uh, save? No. No, because it's a it's rage a roll attack. attack. That's where the roll comes in. The big dice coming in. Ooh, some sixes on the go. 16 total. Yee. <laughs> Man. Probably going to get a gulp of water in his mouth. After yeah, he'll, he'll have to make a save. Because he's, he's holding his breath. He's... And uh, he, he should be glowing. 16 damage. Yep. And he's glowing? Yeah, no, yeah, glowing. That's what Guiding Bolt does. It makes you glow, so the next attack against him has advantage. The next attack against him has advantage. <laughs> yeah. so Rough. I see how it is, Clover. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to wrap the game up and let the bad guy escape, and here you are. Okay, so now you can see this outline of a man struggling to swim, but he, he does make his save. He's still swimming underwater. But now he's glowing. You see an outline of him <laughs> glowing and swimming towards the dark cave underwater in the river. Who's next? Uh, Alex. Larry. Alex. Go. I'm next. And you're next. Uh, you still have a net twenty to use. Oh, I do. Well, in that case, <laughs> this uh, this <laughs> javelin here. Come on. I also have. Yeah, I have a javelin. So. Okay. So you're gonna chuck a javelin. I'm gonna chuck a javelin underwater, right at this 20 guy. feet of water, and it's gonna <laughs> hit because it's a natch. So just roll damage. All right. So we got. Uh, what do we got here? One d six. It's a good thing this is for a good cause. One d six this was plus five, but plus an arm. <laughs> Well, it's, well, it's uh, is it critical because it's a yeah. twenty? Uh huh. Yeah. So I get so you max out the first die first. and then you add that on. Oh, oh, here's another max die. So there's twelve <laughs> plus five is seventeen plus another two for my rage. Nineteen. <laughs> yep. Is there anything left for me? Yeah. Oh, he's still going. I have to make a con save to see if he surfaces, which he makes. He's still swimming. He's okay. glowing, and he's got a javelin sticking out of him, like, <laughs> like a harpoon whale. But he's still swimming underwater. I'm gonna charge. Thank you, whoever sent me those uh, nat twenty. We appreciate that. Cause my sword to have yeah. light, so if I should drop it, I can find it. Okay. And I will dive in, aiming the sword right for his back. Okay. You're gonna make an athletics check and then an attack. The athletics check is to see if you could dive and swim to him in one round. Twenty one. That's good enough. <laughs> this is nat twenty. Eat up the oh, advantage, or could he have the advantage? I think it does. Yeah. It, it does. does. For the next 24 to hit. That hits? <laughs> it's not a natural 20. <laughs> so it's the, uh, the, the DM, you have, uh, I think, four advantages and five rerolls. So you will have to roll those over to the next game. 11? Yep. I think I think that's right. We're going to run with them. Yeah, He's, might as well. He bloop, 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 air bubbles happen. And I get two attacks. So I should have... Is he done? Your second attack is just lifting him back to the surface. His listless body floats back, well, and you I... just tow along with him, holding onto a javelin. Okay. <laughs> or whatever you want to do. I'll but... use the javelin, because if I use the sword, I'll just cut him in half. Yeah. He's... he's dead. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's dead. dead. He's dead. <laughs> you swim back, dragging the, the... like a... dragging a fish, just... dragging him back using the... the javelin. Okay. Okay, so now you have a very scared maiden who is wounded and scared <laughs> because the two real powerful people are dead. Um, so, what do you do? Cast calm emotions on her. Good move. You know what? Here, you can carry over this inspiration into the next game, Mark. <laughs> oh, but he caught it. Okay. <laughs> what, what, she, I mean, what is this? She was very panicky. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And now she's not. She seems just at ease. Although she's still bleeding, I, just letting you all I away. am tying her hands, yeah. too. Banging her. She's like, uh, 
I'm so somewhat relieved. relieved. Actually, somewhat relieved that this is all over. It's way too quiet, and I'm still a bear. So I'm frustrated that I didn't get to hit anybody. Yeah. So I just start biting and tearing the boat apart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, you're like a bear in the zoo with one of those things. You're just smashing it and having a ball. Yep. If you see a hammer... She's like, I am <laughs> I'm just a pawn in their game. Just a pawn, really. It's... What were they trying to do? Kill the mayor? Yes. Why? Because they... They want to put in their own person into power. Was that the real mayor? Yes, that's the real mayor. So the Pashas are so I figured from the get trying to move in. Yes. Indeed, Vezra, though powerful than me, was also just a pawn in their games. Pity. Vezra was the one that had the shiny around her neck, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Let's, let's go look for that. Yeah. Well, I can't He's see got it. it. This is... Well, no, I, I, I missed the grab oh. on it. Uh, it's what floating. What do you do with me? She seems so that's, calm now. That's, that's for the mayor to decide. Yeah. yeah. Now, now that Mark cast, cast Xanax on her, she's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <I'll, laughs> very calm. I'll pick her up. Throw her over my shoulder. Go up the steps. As you're about to go up the steps, uh -oh. you see the half-orc come down. And he's like, you caught them. Yes. The mayor will reward you greatly. Send so, a diver down to fetch that jewel from the elf I well, sliced I was, gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna, like, jump in and go after it if you went. <laughs> but yeah, my Warhammer. Who knows was how it, far was it Count is. Ashwan and Vezra? Yes. Yes. Mm. Better kind of... You have funny. done well. He sheathes his sword. And he... Alagano owes you a great debt once again. Come, bring her. Oh, you guys shoulder. go up, you follow him, and he looks at you and he likes, he, he nods. He's like, I must admit I was suspicious, but I see now what ploy they have initiated. I'll show my, I'll show my nose and the others and say this is, this is what we were trying to investigate from dinner on. Yeah, yes. I guess the mayor... We're trying to get the to the count, bottom of this. The Count must have brought you in as pawns in his game. But you have thwarted his game. This is good. The mayor will be most grateful. You guys return now through the labyrinth and the entire room is empty. Save the mayor and his wife. They are seated at a table. They beckon you to sit, and the mayor asks you to summarize what you have discovered, which you do, and in the interest of game time, you will explain what happened, okay? The mayor nods and, Count Ashwan has been an ally of mine for many years, but I did not think that he would betray me. I was always suspicious of Vezra because of the political motivations of the Pashas. The fact that they were in league together and that they would try to use you to get to me is what is most disturbing. But perhaps the gods watch over me once again for you have discovered their plots and thwarted them. I am told that you defeated both Ashwan and Vizra. Yes. And that Sliced clean in there. Yes. Guanduli has told me that the body of Veshra would be found in the bottom of the river. You will be rewarded greatly. Please, accept my invitations to be my guests tonight. And in the morning, we will break fast and speak of your rewards. I am weary, but I thank you with all of my heart and my life for your service to me, my family, and to Alagon. And with that, I, I rear up on my back legs and roar, because I'm still a bear. Yeah. And then I shake and get water on absolutely everyone and everything. <laughs> and, and everyone laughs, like a Scooby-Doo <laughs> episode. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Thank you, players. Thank you, donors, for making this game so challenging. We honor, <laughs> um, as a DM, I found this fascinating and challenging. 
but well, also fun. It's the first so time I've this, done stuff like that. That was pretty fun. Yeah, you know what? I, I hope this adventure, it's a little different. This was not, you know, a dungeon crawl with minis and terrain. This was just uh, kind of a murder mystery dinner party D&D game. So I hope you guys had fun. Thank you guys for making it fun, all my players. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, and it it uh, it will be a little bit, a few minutes. We're off schedule because I dragged too long and we also had to do intros. But coming up next, we have Fenway's game. Uh, but we have to go pee first, I think, don't we? Yeah, and eat yeah. lunch. Yeah. Quick, so quick break. thank you guys. Stay tuned because we've got games going on all, all the time. We're going to roll in some videos and some more information about Extra Life, which is the whole reason why we're here at the Gygax house. And um, so stick around. We'll be back. Woo.